under the lights as we go 500 miles. Track sweeper is still at work down in turn number one. A couple of vehicles there, so the field's being held. And now uh, they begin to roll off from pit road on the first of the pace laps. Boy, that track looks wide, but you don't use much of the width of it here. We're working on the number 18 there of Kyle Busch. Might have a radio uh, radiator issue there. So let's have a look at our Geico starting grid. Kurt Busch, second Darlington pole. Jimmy Johnson, last year's winner, both in Chevrolet. Row two, Kyle Busch, the 2008 winner, and Casey Kane, his seventh top five start here. Martin Truex, top tens in three of the last four here. Denny Hamlin won here in 2010. Matt Kenseth led the most laps the last three races, and Jeff Gordon, his 700th consecutive start in the Sprint Cup Series. Greg Biffle, back-to-back -back winner here in 05 and 06. Kevin Harvick, second here, 2003. Jeff Burton won both Darlington Cup races in 99. Juan Pablo Montoya finished fifth here in 2010. Clint Boyer, ninth in 07, and rookie Ricky Stenhouse. Paul Menard, fastest in practice, ninth in the points, and Dale Earnhardt Jr., who finished fourth here twice. Let's see if we get to Denny Hamlin. What do you say? Hey, you Denny Hamlin at CW. You got a copy there, buddy? Hey, man, thank you for joining us last week. I know that was a lot of fun, but uh, tonight you're behind the wheel of that number 11 car. How you feeling, and can you go the distance here? Yeah, I mean, if, uh, if there's any true test, this is going to be it. Uh, 500 miles here is really, really tough, mentally and physically. Uh, you've got to be so focused for so long, but I'm sure you guys are going to miss me up there in the Hollywood Hotel. But uh, fortunately for me, I got my real job back. Yeah, well, uh, tonight you just get to work with Darian Grubb. You don't have to mess with Michael and uh, with, uh, with Chris down there. So have a good run, buddy, and we're pulling for you. Tonight's race is brought to you by Budweiser, the beer that starts with full flavor and ends with a crisp, fast finish. Great times are waiting. Grab some buds. Let's get down to Pit Road, beginning with Steve Burns. Thank you very much, Mike. Down here, pit stall number 43 is the first stall off of turn four. That's where Dale Earnhardt Jr. will be bidding tonight. Now, talking to his team a moment ago, they said they found a lot of speed in that number 88 car, but that doesn't mean anything if the guy behind the wheel can't drive it. So they worked very hard on making that car fast and drivable. Chris Devota. Well, Martin Truex led 25 laps and finished fifth in this race last year. But as a team, they felt like they gave the win away. They have been waiting for this race this night. Martin just came on the radio and said the track is pretty dirty right now. But if you could measure confidence by the smile he had in his race car yesterday, Martin Truex is feeling very good. Matt Yoakum. Krista, after a last minute change of his helmet shield due to the color of the tint on his shield, Kyle Busch's task at hand is trying for his eighth weekend sweep after dominating Friday night's nationwide race. He told me the biggest trend that he picked up that he hopes to utilize tonight is just how dramatically this racetrack changed. It even surprised him. He had Dave Rogers make some last minute adjustments to the team machine, hoping that the car stays more on the tighter side. Now for a special lesson in history, let's go to Jeff Hammond. Matt, the thing is about Darlington, it's all about history. You look here behind me, folks. This is Ramsey's Meadow Pond. That was the challenge that Harold Brazelton was faced with in 1950 when he bought and constructed this racetrack. From that reason, the uniqueness and the challenges and the character of Darlington grew. Now think of it like this. Last week at Talladega, 43 drivers danced together to get to victory lane. Tonight, the winner will have to dance with the lady in black. Thanks, Jeff. That's Pearson Tower, that grandstand alongside the pond. Named for David Pearson, 10-time Darlington winner, the most of anybody in Sprint Cup Series history. Yeah, Mike, if there was a prolific driver at this racetrack, it was David Pearson. Absolutely. There was the threat of rain earlier, but that has greatly diminished. There is sun off to the west. It's still 81 degrees. Track temp of 93 as the sun has been pushing through a light group of clouds. Light breeze. We should be fine to go 501 miles tonight. 367 laps will make up the distance. 45 on Pitt Road and Sunoco Race Fuel at least every 54 to 58 laps. 
Bobby Labonte changed engines this morning. That is the only car that has to go to the rear. He's the 2000 winner here. You know, they're blowing the track, and this place is notorious for sand. A lot of, as the track lays here to daytime, sand blows in around the racetrack, and they need to clean it off before we drop the green. That's always been an issue here and at Rockingham in the Sand Hills of North Carolina, in the PD area of South Carolina. Uh, just that light coating of sand, and you can see the jet dryers moving it. Uh, off to the bottom of the racetrack, so we'll have a clean surface and be ready to go here. And Mike and Darrell, we see it every time we come here. This racetrack is so wide, but as Michael Wal Waltrip said in the pre-race show, it's like being on a one-lane alley or maybe a two-lane country road. The start of the race and restarts are always very exciting and energetic here. They repainted the walls last night and this morning. After last night's race, and the practice and qualifying here Friday and Saturday, there were a lot of black marks and scuff marks on those walls and on some of the cars. In fact, J.J. Uh, Yaley's number 36, the right side of his car, didn't even get repainted after it was into the wall yesterday. And the same gentleman that's been painting those walls for over 30 years, putting that Darlington emblem on the wall. He'll be busy after tonight. New eyes for a couple of drivers and new leaders atop the pit box. Steve Reese there for Joey Logano because of the uh, suspension at the Penske team. Kevin Buskirk, former driver, longtime crew chief and crew member, will call the shots for Brad Kozlowski. Yeah, Todd Gordon and Paul Wolf, the respective crew chiefs for those teams, they will be back at Dover. Just think about a football team being without their head coach, maybe their assistant coach and their two coordinators. That's what Joy Logano and Brad Keselowski will be working with over the next three races. Yeah, but you got the key guys behind the wheel. You yes, sir. Your, you got your quarterback right there ready to race. Also, Matt Kenseth, Jason Ratcliffe, his suspension reduced to one race, but he will serve that tonight and be off the pit box for Joe Gibbs Racing in the number 20. Yeah, Wally Brown will be sitting in for him. Got some great in-car camera shots here. Ryan Newman. Pace car is in. Well, this is one of those races where, you know, I don't know if these boys need to hear these words or not, because uh, they might want to take it easy tonight, but boogity, boogity, boogity! Let's go racing drivers! where the race is for fourth. Coming off turn four, Truex to the inside, and he'll drop in behind Casey Kane. Kurt Busch, your leader. A lot, a lot of scrambling going on behind them. Kyle Busch in that 18 car, he, he wasted no time getting by Jimmy Johnson. Won the race here last night, dominated, trying to sweep the two races of a weekend for the third time this year. And, uh, you know, you talked about this being a two-lane road. It really is one of those tracks that sucks you in to making you think you can pass a guy, but there's not enough room to really make it happen in very many places around this track. Here comes Jeff Gordon for six on the inside against Denny Hamlin. Thought better of it at turn one. Matt Kenseth right with him. When everybody's playing nice, it's single foul into turn one. Now that's when everybody's playing nice. Paul Menard makes a move to the inside, mid-pack down into turn number three. Gets past Stenhouse. Jimmy Johnson with a look as things tighten up at the front. Kurt, Kyle, the Bush brothers, then Jimmy Johnson. One, two, three. Darrell, what I see, there, all of those drivers are up against the wall in one and two, but the last time through three and four, Kyle Bush in the 18 pulled it to the bottom about a lane lower than his brother, Kurt Bush. These tires and the way they got the car set up now and the weight of this car allows them to run low in, one, in a three and four where they've never been able to before. And that's really opened up passing lanes in three and four. Riding with Johnson in third. Who last year in this race gave Rick Hendrick that dramatic and long, long awaited 200 Sprint Cup victory as a car owner. You know, and Larry, you talk about three and four, and I think it's a little more open now with the low groove and the high groove, but you can see how black it is up next to the wall. That's like, that's like glue up there. When the left side tires get into that real dark stuff, it just really makes the car hook up. 
And that's where the drivers like to run. There's a lot of grip and speed up there, but if your car is handling good, head to the bottom and make the shortest way around the track. But you can see that black lane is a lot narrower down in turns one and two for these drivers. Yeah, one and two is you enter one so fast that, and it shoots you right up to the wall. The only move you got down there is what we call a crossover move. That's where you let the guy go in and when he washes up, you shoot under him and try to take his line away. Jimmy Johnson had the move going into three to not complete the pass in turn four, and now he's got a mirror full of his teammate, Casey Kane. Well, this is a momentum racetrack. If you have to get out of the throttle on corner exit, the guy behind you is coming with a full head of steam, and he will blow right by you, and we see that a lot here. See what kind of speed Clint Boyer carries into turn number three. Up in the high 180s. And only down to about 135 off the throttle in the middle of the corner. Kane and Johnson, teammates, single file, third and fourth. Jimmy Johnson's 48, Casey Kane in the five. Gets a good runoff two and closes that distance. A close call toward the back of the pack for Timmy Hill and J.J. Yaley. That's Hill in the 32, inside Yaley's 36, still scuffed up from a practice crash. Oh, boy. But see, that's turn one, Mike, and that's what I'm talking about. It's, it's almost impossible to run in there side by side racing somebody. Inevitably, you get into the guy on the outside. Well, it's Timmy Hill's first time here in a cup car. And those are the lessons you will learn, and most of the time you learn them the hard way when you're a rookie. One of the things you have to do here is anticipate. Just like you see right now. Three wide. We don't see that at Darlington, Daryl. But I guarantee you the 43 car of Almirola, he probably bogged them down off of turn two, and that gave Ryan a big run down the back. But look at these drivers. Newman was all the way on the apron in the 39 car, and then Almirola in the 43, he was on the apron on the exit of the corner. See, one of the things that makes this car so fast and makes the pace so quick is the weight of the car. This car is 150 pounds lighter than last year's car. Most of that off of the right side, which makes it a lot easier on right side tires. Big move by Jamie McMurray in the number one. So here are two fellows racing for position side by side. Dare I say it? Hello, Newman. Yeah, see, it, it, again, it's just that momentum. And if you bog down off the corner, somebody way back gets a big momentum run on you. And here I come. You clear, see what a clear, great run he got off turn two. Outside, outside 99. And that's, outside and that's why 99. I Looking back inside, 43 inside of you. That's why I say you anticipate. I know here in the past, you would let off in the middle of the straightaway so you wouldn't catch a guy in the middle of the corner in the wrong spot so you could get that big head of steam and get by him going down the straightaway. But why do you make a bold move like that? Because otherwise it's so hard to pass here. Yeah, Steve Burns gave a report on Dale Earnhardt Jr. right before the green flag started back in the 16th position. He said they just couldn't find the speed they were looking for in qualifying, but he has moved up a lot here in these first 11 laps. He's moved up just outside the top 10 and 11th. Well, I really feel strongly about Dale Jr. needing to walk out of here tonight with a top 10. I said top five in a pre-race show. I think they'd be happy with a top 10 tonight, get some of that momentum back. The Bush brothers, Kurt up front, who tested at Indianapolis this week, said it may have given him a little edge to hold it wide open to run for the pole here. And Kyle, who wore them out in last night's race, Entering tonight, Kurt had only led one lap here since 2005. He's now led another 13. And remember, Mike, he sets on the pole with a new track record Kurt Busch does in the 78. I, I'm, I know he wants to make a statement, Larry. I didn't just set on the pole one fast lap and I'm going to fall back in the field. I'm going to lead this race. I've got a fast car. And he's had a fast car a lot this year, a couple of top five finishes. Not only does he think he can win tonight, so does his team. They went to victory lane here not long ago with Regan Smith. Steve Burns. Early feedback from Jeff Gordon. He says his car is a little bit tight in one and two, but his car is really good on exit at both ends. Daryl, I, I think that's a big key. We talked about Ryan Newman getting that runoff turn two while ago. Being able to get off the corner carries that speed down these straightaways. Yeah, just, just look at an egg, and that's what this track is shaped like. Both straightaways are the same length. 
1,229 feet long, but the corners are so different. Now watch Joey Logano as he gets down toward the transition between the banking and the apron. Here's his number 22. See that left wheel? It's right there, and that's the splitter hitting. The, that's the splitter going down and hitting the flat part of the racetrack out of the banking. That car is... Remember California? We saw this car. It drugged the left front. His, th that same race car, Joey left, Logano's 22. Left side splitter off. And here's uh, his teammate, Brad Keselowski. Uh, obviously, they have very similar setups. You can get by with that for a while, but if you keep doing it and you rub that part of the splitter off, it's going to hurt the aerodynamics yeah, of that race car. Yeah, if it was... If it was If it was right side, I'd be worried. Left side, eh, it's going to be down the close to the ground all night anyway. Matt Kenseth has passed Jeff Gordon for sixth. The Bush brothers lead in Darlington. 21 green flag laps at Darlington. Kurt Busch leading here, Toyota's top performer. With Kyle Busch second, Martin Truex in the top five. Kenseth right behind him. Denny Hamlin and Clint Boyer all in the top ten. Mike Bliss started toward the back, has taken his car to the garage area. Landon Castle made an unscheduled pit stop. Got new tires. He's back out there. Two laps down. Mike, this is absolutely the closest to the wall you will see cars run and not hit it. In three and four, I mean, they are just a paint job away from being into the wall. Our leader is Kurt Busch in the 78, his brother Kyle Busch in 18. They've caught the back end of the pack, and they're starting to lap some drivers here about lap 22. Matt? Mike, an update from the leader, Kurt Busch, who's taken out. He was a little unsure about this race car, he told me, on long runs because they didn't make one during practice. But so far, this is the car, if anything, is a little bit on the tight side, and the front a little numb, but so far, he's very pleased with the 78 machine. Yeah, we're about getting close to halfway through this fuel run, so uh, start, handling characteristics are starting to show up. I tell you, that Matt Kent's that 20 car, here he goes again tonight. I, I believe that's a guy you really got to keep an eye on all night long, that 20 car. Matt Kent's his kind of track, his kind of race, and he got a good race car. He challenged Martin Truex there for fifth spot after moving past uh, Jeff Gordon. Half a dozen laps ago, Harvick has passed Gordon now, and here goes Kenseth to the bottom of the racetrack in three and four, and he's going to clear Truex before the exit of the corner. I love the fact that you can run the bottom like that. I, I got so tired of seeing these guys all freight train around the top. Now you got some options in three and four. Darrell, that was about a lane below the bottom groove there through three and four, and he stayed there all the way through it till he completed the pass. That's the difference in this car and the tires and the way the cars are this year. You can get down there and carry speed. You don't just bog down. So now three Chevrolets, two Toyotas in the top five. And Kevin Harvick has moved past Jeff Gordon, as I said, now up to seventh place, Darrell. Yeah, let's watch Harvick as we go down the front here, headed towards turn one. Watch how he clips the apron when you get in here. You get the left wheel down on the apron right there. That shoots the cart. You catch it with the throttle, not the brake. A couple of little twitches on the wheel. Now you want to catch it low line off of that corner. Off two, watch that wall. That thing really jumps out on you in a hurry. You're kind of going downhill down the back, carrying a lot of speed into three, right on the bottom. Try to hook the bottom if you can, and I'm telling you, he's working it. I like the way these cars are running the bottom of the racetrack, and Harvick's going somewhere. And, Darrell, he had to play with the throttle all the way through the corner until he was late exit here with 26 laps on those tires. You know, this has got to be a big surprise to the drivers, too, any of them, that they, can, that they can run the bottom of this track because we haven't been able to do that. You know, we're, we're used to seeing cars run up against the wall down the straightaway. And this is probably the last racetrack with the Winston red and white alternating blocks on the wall scheme that makes these cars look so much faster than they are as Harvick makes the move on Martin Truex. But Darrell, we're not used to seeing these cars run this close to the wall in the corner all the time. And that's such a great contrast. Did you see the, uh, I forget who he was passing, Harvick was passing the 56 car, Martin Truex. He's out next, almost touching the wall. Harvick's down on the apron and he's able to make the pass. Really cool. Danica Patrick got about to go a lap down here to Kurt Busch. Krista? Yeah, well, Danica had said, based on her qualifying effort, remember, she qualified 40, and she said they didn't think they would be qualifying runs in practice, and it really hurt 
helped her. She said, qualifying, you just have to commit. And I wasn't able to do that. So they knew they were going to be way behind. She said, that's the bet I made for myself. Well, this is her second trip to Darlington. Uh, she ran her second cup race here last year, ran Daytona, then came to Darlington. Everybody went, why Darlington? You got to run the toughest tracks so you know what to expect when you're ready to run the full season. Two other women have started cup races here. Janet Guthrie in 1977, she actually finished 16th. And then Shauna Robinson here in 2002, she finished 42nd. But there have been two other uh, women drivers here in the past. Darrell, you mentioned Matt Kenseth in that 20 car. He just keeps picking them up, laying them down. Just past Casey Kane in the five. Steve, is Casey starting to feel something he doesn't like? Yeah, he's losing the handle a little bit, Larry Mack. He said, I started off tight going down the hill, but now I'm getting loose going down the hill, and I'm starting to get loose going into turn three. There are about half a dozen drivers who have lost a lot of spots since the start of this race. Ricky Stenhouse. Uh, minus five, Casey Mears minus five, Eric Almarola minus seven, Mark Martin has lost five spots, and Marcus Ambrose has dropped six. At the speeds that you run in this new car, Mike, you hear the drive. He said, I feel it going down the hill. In this car, it's going so much faster on corner exit that the cars, you can actually feel it come off the corner and start down the hill. That's why we get some of these terms that we do that maybe we haven't heard in the past. Slow car on the apron is Scott Speed and the Levine family racing 95. He makes it to pit road. Will stay green at 31 laps. From the pole with a new track record, Kurt Busch's Chevrolet has led every lap so far in Darlington. Here in Darlington, South Carolina, 38 laps complete. Kurt Busch ahead of his brother Kyle by 1.7 seconds. New third place car is Matt Kenseth. He passed Jimmy Johnson a lap ago, and Kenseth sits 2.8 seconds off the lead. I just love what this team has done, Mike. I mean, even through the adversity of the penalty, I, I think that even made them that much better. And these guys are working so well together, and Matt is, I mean, he is motivated like I've never seen him before. Matt Yoakum with more. And the good news for this change as far as crew chiefs goes, Wally Brown worked in the engineering department, Mike, at Roush Fenway when Matt drove for Jack Roush, so they do have history. So that way, Wally understands the inflection in Matt's voice. Like right now when he says the car is way too free on entry and exit, they need to make a significant change. Wally knows exactly how big of a change he's got to make on the spot. Thanks, Matt. Casey Mears made an unscheduled pit stop. Went back out two laps down. Here's ninth place, Clint Boyer in the 15, just ahead of Dale Earnhardt Jr. Yeah, we talked about Dale Earnhardt Jr. just a little bit ago when he's sitting back there in 11th, started in 16th. He just continues to make his way forward. And, and you know, you talk about driver can tell by, uh, or crew chief can tell by the inflection in a driver's voice what's going on. And I know that might seem like, well, that's kind of a silly thing or kind of a, why would that, why would that do any good? That truly is. Drivers have a tendency to elevate the uh, level of excitement as the car goes off or the car is not right. Pretty calm until you get uh, things not going your way. Then they go up a little. So as Boyer holds on to ninth, let's go to his pit and Steve. And his spotter, Brett Griffin, just told him, you're burning up your tires by overdriving it in the bottom groove. And Clint responded, well, hey, where's Junior running? Brett Griffin responded, he's in the upper groove. You know, a, a driver loves that bottom groove. You know why? Because that's a long way from the wall. And uh, that wall is aggravating. They have passed uh, David Reagan. Now uh, 11 of Denny Hamlin goes by. That green car is Reagan, who won at Talladega last week. A big thrill for car owner Bob Jenkins. Got a 1-2 finish. All three of his drivers had career best days. David Gilliland helped push Reagan to the win. The last time David's finished 1-2 in the Sprint Cup Series, 1976 at Atlanta. Dave Marcus beat David Pearson. There's David Gilliland, his teammate in the 38 car that finished second and pushed David Reagan to that win. Well, last week, it took two Davids to beat a Goliath. Yes, it did. And they did. There's David Gilliland in another of the front row motorsports machines. I, I, I just love Bob Jenkins. I love his commitment. The resolve to hang in the sport. 
I mean, through thick and thin. And I love the, ch the chance that he's given a bunch of guys over there, crew chiefs, drivers. Really a cool program. All right, pit stops are coming soon as we've run every one of the 44 laps under green. Here's Jeff Hammond. Ambrose, the first to pit lane. Krista. Yeah, Marcus Ambrose, the first one in. He started 24th in this race. Yesterday, he talked a lot about how uncomfortable his car felt. Right now, just like a lot of guys, really tight. And Daryl, with our first set of green flag stops here, we talk about it every time we race here, how treacherous it is getting to the apron and getting on to pit road. You have to, you have to overcompensate getting on pit road here because it's sandy down there, it's slick, and that commitment comb will be right in your face before you realize it. Here's Ambrose's teammate at Richard Petty Motorsports, Eric Calmarola. There's that little part of the wall where Hammond was standing, and we'll go back to Krista. Yeah, and you saw uh, Eric Almarola getting in that three-wide traffic earlier. He is also, like his teammate, talking about a tight race car. You see the wrench in the back window, the crew member just putting his wedge into the car to try to help the handling right now. And guys, what we'll see here, because from what they ran at the start of this race, they've lost about two and a half seconds on the stopwatch. Once some of the leaders start coming to pit road for four fresh tires, you cannot be far behind them. You'll be giving up way too much track time. Yeah, and when somebody has on new tires, that's when you have wrecks. I tell you why, you catch a guy so fast, he can't get out of your way. Bobby Labonte in and out. David Reagan comes in as they had that Teammates running second and third in close proximity there. And remember, the reason I say that, where are you going to go? There's one groove, and if a guy's coming at you like two seconds faster, Steve, what are they saying down there, bud? Well, you just see him make a chassis adjustment there, GW. Four tires for the 34 car. Last week's winner, David Reagan. And again, a chassis adjustment. Tighten that 34 up. His teammate David Gilliland follows him to pit lane. Jeff Burton and Brad Keselowski, the series champion, headed pit side. Bobby Labonte has been in and out. These were a lot of drivers that were about to go a lap down. Or they've already been lapped. What they're trying to do is get advantage of those fresh tires and maybe get their lap back. Boy, Matt Kenseth and Kyle Busch teammates there. Second and third, but pit stops imminent for them. Matt? And the Blue Deuce comes to a stop, and Brad Keselowski telling Kevin Buskirk that the car is absolutely on the free side. You can see the track bar adjustments already been completed on the right side. Four tires, Krista. Yeah, Martin Truex coming in for his first pit stop. Another guy who's really tight. They're going to take Wedge out as a plan and also adjust the right front air pressure. Martin saying, I just need front grip, Matt. Back in practice on Friday, Greg Biffle had a significant Darlington strap on that right side, a lot of cosmetic damage. The car, though, he says right now, is back and forth on the bounce, both tight and free, and it was on the splitter much of that first run. Meanwhile, the 29 of Kevin Harvick is on pit road as well. Montoya, McMurray, Harvick in. Logano completes his stop. Tony Stewart gets service, and here comes Stenhouse and Earnhardt. Matt? And Kevin Harvick trying to put a check mark next to that crowd event that he doesn't have and that's a win here in the Southern 500 Harvick and Gil Martin told me their big concern early on was going to be the car being too free that's exactly what's happened Harvick says the car is on the loose side Steve Matt Casey came in they're going to make an air pressure adjustment and make a track bar adjustment his car he said he felt like the right rear was loose Jimmy Johnson with his echo paint scheme and the pit pit stall for his four tire change Matt our pole sitter, Kurt Busch, is on pit road. Tires already going up. Who said the car during that run was on the tight side, but no adjustments. Meanwhile, his old teammate from Roush Fenway days, Carl Edwards, is in. Carl says the car was tight in the center, but rolling very well through the corners of one and two. And Let's here comes the leader, three. Kyle Busch. Peels off. He inherited the lead from his older brother and now turns it over to his teammate, Matt Kenseth. 
I wonder if Kyle pitting a lap before Matt is part of a plan, so each pick up at least a bonus point here. Well, what I saw there before Kyle Busch and the 18 pitted, all three of the Joe Gibbs drivers were running one, two, three. None of them have been to pit road now. You see Denny Hamlin in the 11. He's on pit road for his stop. Mike, I think they can't. They wanted to come and get four tires so they got run over because the, the guys with four tires were eating them up. Matt? And the leader, the 20 car, Kenton, he's peeling off coming down the pit road while his teammate Kyle Busch is there. Busch and his car was slotting in those terribly. Major League tight, he was hoping for a big air pressure change. Meanwhile, on the left side, Matt Kenton coming down to his pit box. He started seven telling his team that the car was really free on entry and exit, hoping for at least more than an air pressure adjustment on the 20. This should cycle the lead back to Kurt Busch, who petted at lap 52, three and a half laps ago. And Larry, in, in this kind of, we're in that stage when the sun hadn't gone down yet. I mean, it is cloudy, but it, it hadn't dropped. The temperature hadn't dropped yet. Still pretty humid. You got to wait this out a little bit before you start making too many major changes, because the track's probably going to go through a pretty good change once it cools off a little bit more. Yeah, just nibble away at it, and that's what we saw on Matt Kenseth in his 20 car. They're just making slight adjustments, just trying to keep up with this racetrack. To me, one of the big real winners in these pit stops because he hit pit road much earlier than the leaders. Kevin Harvick in the 29, now that it's cycled through, he's in the fourth position. He got those fresh tires about two to three laps earlier than the drivers at the front of the pack. We've been green through 55 laps. Kenseth and Kyle Busch have led laps. Kurt Busch is back in front. 61 laps complete, all green. Here's tonight's 40 for Bruce track facts. Darlington has now hosted 110 Sprint Cup races. That's fourth on the all-time list. And the smallest margin of victory since electronic timing and scoring came into use. 2003, Ricky Craven over Kurt Busch. Greg Biffle, the last Ford winner here in 2006. Matt Kenseth, Kevin Harvick fight for fourth. Yeah, Matt Kenseth in the 20 got a little bit behind because he was one of the last drivers to hit pit road under green flag pit stops. And speaking of green flag pit stops, we talk about the importance of everyone doing their job. What this is right here, this is the two laps, including the green flag pit stop. We talked about getting on pit road. We talked about the length of this pit road. You can see Casey Kane right there in that five car. He basically won that battle as far as drivers and the, the job their pit crew did. However, because Kurt Busch, who had the same time relative to the others, stopped two laps sooner, as you said, Larry, he gained a net total of two seconds compared to the lead he had when that round of pit stops began. Yeah, and the good thing is when you come back out with those fresh tires, you can pass people. You don't have to wait on them. You, didn't, you don't get held up, and that makes a huge difference in your lap time. Ricky Stenhouse, the last of 25 cars on the lead lap. As the Bush brothers are back out front, they started first and third. They've run one, two. Much of the night, here are the two rookies. Nose to tail, Danica Patrick and Stenhouse. They've been having a bit of a battle. Ricky was all the way down. You see here, all the way down below the white line. The last time through here, he came off the corner and they almost smacked each other, but uh, he got back and he got by her that time. Now, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. in the 17, he's fighting to stay on the lead lap. He's the last driver on the lead lap right now, but you can see our leader, Kurt Busch in the 78, how much he's closing in on Ricky. He's going to lap Danica for the second time and then go after Stenhouse. His lead, though, is disappearing. Kyle Busch has knocked it down to seven tenths of a second as we pick up 11th place where Greg Biffle and Juan Pablo Montoya have been going at it. Now Bush to the inside. Yeah, Danica is really putting up a fight right here with Kurt. They, they uh, look like they almost touched coming down the front straightaway here. Kurt's able to get by. Now Kyle, Kyle Bush is not far behind. Looking back from Biffle. Montoya challenging and Denny Hamlin who's going to run the whole night. His back is healed. That fractured vertebrae is in good shape. Hamlin will run the entire distance. No backup driver standing by. And now he challenges Montoya on the inside. 
This has always been a great track for Denny Hamlin. He finished second here a year ago. Also, his first nationwide series start a number of years ago. Had to start at the rear of the field, finished in the top ten. Yeah, he has one of the best average finishes here of anybody. Biffle 16 was the first car to capture a Darlington stripe in practice this weekend. Hopefully they got it repaired, got him back out. Same car. Uh, Danica Patrick's the only driver who has had to go to a backup car because of an incident with the wall. Now Hamlin completes the pass on Montoya. I think Denny Hamlin will be one of those guys, Mike, that will kind of not press too hard for a while. Get comfortable in the car, get his back feeling good, get some heat in that body. I think he'll be a guy we'll talk about before the night's over with. How'd you describe it, Daryl? Shake the rust off? Shake, that's what he said. I'm a little rusty, and that'll come to him. And uh, again, it's one of his favorite tracks. So uh, feel real good about what he'll do tonight. Kurt Busch's lead is gone. Kyle is right there. Chevy versus Toyota for the lead. 70 laps in, and Kyle goes to the inside. Now, the lap car is right in front of them. Stenhouse and Reagan may be a factor here. And Kurt says, oh, no, you don't. No, Kyle said, I'll take care of you, brother. He backed off and gave uh, Kurt Bush some room to get down in front of him there to be able to clear the 34 car here. And you got the, the orange car back there, the number 20 of Matt Kenseth. He is on the prowl. Been fast everywhere he's been this year, Matt Kenseth. Led 142 laps last week at Talladega. Now Kens it to the inside and lines up behind Johnson going into the corner. Then drops to the bottom and makes the pass. That, that has to be, you know, Jimmy Johnson in the 48 has to let you do that. You do not want to race each other off turn two over there. It's too dangerous. Ricky Stenhouse, the 17, still fighting hard to stay on the lead lap as the Bush brothers close in. I'm Miss Spring Cup, and you're watching the NASCAR Spring Cup Series on Fox. Sign up for the Quicken Loans Bring It Home Sweepstakes. Every time Ryan Newman finishes at the top five, five lucky fans have their mortgage payment made for one month. To enter for more details, go to QLRacing.com. We have a new leader, Kyle Busch. Made it work on big brother Kurt in the 78. Got up against him as Kurt's car started to bobble. Kyle said that's enough of that. Down to the bottom and it's on for the lead. With Kyle putting his Toyota out front. Matt Kenseth has now moved to second and it looks like the handle has gone away on that black Chevrolet. You know what Mike Larry Larry don't you think it's fair to say that uh, Kyle Busch in the 18 on their stop they made the right adjustments and they made his car better look like that 78 car Kurt Busch they either didn't make any adjustments or they needed to make some different ones I bet Matt Yoakum can tell us absolutely Larry Mack and Kurt telling the team that the last change was what's an air pressure adjustment Jess has not helped the race car at all he has lost all rear grip and that was a great example seeing the car sideways he's got to hold on to about lap 105 when they can adjust it again and that will just kill his exit in straightaway speed because he can't put the throttle down Jimmy Johnson closing in in that 48 running the uh, Lowe's number emerald green Chevrolet in support of the Pantone color of the year launch of the new color palette of Valspar signature paint at Lowe's visit your local Lowe's for more info so another thing I like about this car at this racetrack these guys are going places I've never seen them go before and it's because of the the way this car handles and the way that that they can drive the car and be comfortable in it it's it's amazing what they've been able to do with this new car. Jimmy Johnson completes the pass, moves up to third. Kurt I, Busch Mike, on the pole falls to fourth. I, I want to watch Ryan Newman here. I mean, he looks, I mean, from my perspective, he looks very uncomfortable. Uh, and look at his, look at his eyes. He's all eyes down, head down. He is digging, man. Never blinks. No. 
And here he is coming down the front right here. And he's holding his steering wheel like, ah, I, that's, that's exactly what it looks like. Like he is so tense in that car. It's a hard night's work here. It is. It takes it takes that kind of focus, but man, he has got a grip on that steering wheel. And he's running about where he started this race, started 21st. He's 20th right now. Dale Earnhardt Jr. past Martin Truex. Casey Mears laps down in the 13. Here's Steve. Dale Earnhardt Jr. started 16th up into the top 10. Now before the first pit stop, Mike, he said his car had good balance, but not enough rear grip. Now he's saying that the car is just a little bit tight in traffic. I should say Casey Mears one lap down. And then Mike and Larry, it's got to be really confusing to these drivers because we have been here for the last several years running right up next to the wall, both ends of the racetrack. Tonight, all of a sudden, they're driving all over the place in the, down on the apron. How about Jeff Gordon, Steve? Yeah, maybe DW could comment on this right after their pit stop, Mike. Jeff Gordon said, I am really, really nervous because I'm really, really tight right now. Alan Gustafson, the crew chief, said 10 4. Wait for the air pressures to come up. What he's nervous about is he knows, as a, as a veteran like he is, how much pressure he's putting on that right front tire. He knows by the how much he's turning the wheel, and he can feel that right front tire digging. And he had tire issues here last year. It was a left rear, but nonetheless, he had a tire issue here last year. He's feeling a lot of pressure on that right front. Toyota's out front, Kyle Busch and Matt Kenseth. Caution free at 87 laps in Darlington. 64th annual Bojangles Southern 500, 93 laps, all caution-free in time for an AT&T race break, brought to you by the nation's fastest 4G LTE network, AT&T Rethink Possible. And Joe Gibbs Racing with Michael Waltrip, Chris Myers. Last night, they took four of the top five spots in a nationwide race here. And look at the guys up front, Kyle Busch, Matt Kenseth, the return of Denny Hamlin dominating tonight. Yeah, we talked about these cars in the opening, saying how many laps they've led this year. They've led more than anyone and they pick, are picking up right where they left off after Talladega with both cars up, uh, two of their cars up at the front right now. This was the scene last year of Hendrick Motorsports for Rick Hendrick, his 200th career win. And certainly with Dale Earnhardt Jr. moving up to join Jimmy Johnson, who won this race uh, last year up near the, the top. Casey Kane is all the way up to fourth. Yeah, Jimmy Johnson is solid. These cars are really strong, Chris. Hendrick Motorsports has been the only true competition to Joe Gibbs Racing week in and week out to lead laps and win races. See Dell Jr., what a solid move for him. We talked about how important it was for Jr. to move up through the field tonight. Dell Jr. is currently inside the top ten and has a really fast car. Yeah, and third in points, he's gained three positions in the last three races. And in the pre-race show, finally the appeals into the highest court without their crew chiefs. Penske rating, but racing, I should say, but for fewer races than initially there. Brad Keselowski, the reigning champ, having to work with Kevin Buskirk instead of Paul Wolf as his crew chief. And his best finish this season, third, and that's happened twice in Las Vegas and Bristol, still looking for that first win. And Joey Logano having to adjust without a crew chief as well, his regular crew chief. We've seen Brad Keselowski and Paul Wolf, his crew chief, who's, his, who's off on the sidelines right now, make such incredible adjustments to that two car during the course of these races and get him up toward the front tonight. It'll be really interesting for me to see if Buskirk can make those same adjustments for Keselowski. He's currently uh, inside the top 20, but hasn't shown a lot of speed so far. Some of the powerhouse teams, Michael, last year we went 172 laps to start, caution-free here at Darlington, and so far we're approaching 100. What have you observed so far, and if a caution comes out, how does that change things? Wow, slipping and sliding. These guys are all over the racetrack, running on the edge of control every lap, but you know, it's early in the going, Chris, so these caution, or excuse me, these green flag pit stops really can change the complexion. There's not a whole lot of team time for the crew chiefs to make decisions on what to do in this fast-paced race. And you see the pit stops on under green already starting racing fans if you know something about speed buckle your seatbelt play AT&T's fastest driver challenge simply call star star fast from your mobile phone and predict who will have the fastest times in this race brought to you by the nation's fastest 4G LTE network AT&T rethink possible let's rejoin Daryl Larry and Mike Thanks, Chris. 98 laps, all green. Jeff Burton in and out. And Larry, this second round of green flag pit stops has begun a little early. Well, it's about 
that works out as far as when Eric Almirola in the 43 and his teammate Marcus Ambrose in the nine, they were some of the first drivers to hit pit road to see Regan Smith there in the 51. We got a Darlington stripe on Josh Weiss here in the 35. But yeah, that's just, I think this is about when they were due to hit pit road based on that first cycle. Most of the leaders not expected for another 10 laps. As Chris pointed out last year, the first caution flag lap 172 will hit 100 laps next time by. Here's Jamie Mackey and Steve. Jamie McMurray's comment is, I am too tight to run the through by one. Four tire change for Jamie McMurray. Krista. Martin Truex said that the car took off a little loose early in the run, but the adjustment they made actually made him worse. It was a wedge adjustment. He said it didn't give me enough rear grip. So he is telling crew chief Chad Johnson, put that wedge back in and adjust that right front air pressure again. He said, Everything. Paul Bobby Labonte also in. Ricky Stenhouse coming. And we said last year the first caution didn't wave to 172, but once that lady in black picked up the yellow scarf, it waved eight times. Steve. And the 88 car of Dale Earnhardt Jr. again looking for more overall grip. Again, he says the balance on that car is good. There's a parade down pit road. Biffle, Keslowski, Montoya, Edwards, Newman. All scheduled green flag stops. Jeff Gordon coming in. Mike, little, little air pressure changes are huge to the feel of the driver. As minor as it may seem, it makes a big difference. Matt? Mike, Brad Keslowski was loose the first run, and the car has gotten progressively looser on this run. Air pressure change for the Blue Deuce. Clint just, Boyer, Tony Stewart getting service. Now just remember when you look at Kyle Busch in the 18, Kenseth in the 20, Johnson in the 48, Kane in the 5, and Harvick in the 29, they were actually some of the drivers to hit pit road at the latter part of that last, last cycle, Harvick being the first. Now Kurt Busch on pit road, here he comes. And he's probably most happy to have this second stop coming because the adjustment they made on the first stop took him out of the lead, dropped him back out of the top five. Matt's there. Hoping for the big adjustment on this time. You can see the crew member put the, the wrench in the back window. Track bar adjustment. He says we really got to tighten this race car up. Steve. Same issue for Casey Kane, Matt, in the five car. He says he's just loose. He doesn't have the grip that he wants. It's a four-tire change. Also having a little trouble hearing Kenny Francis on the radio. Krista. Joey Logano working with a new crew chief this week said his car went from tight to neutral to loose the last run. They were worried they maybe overcompensated on the adjustment. Matt? But Chevy and Kevin Harvick comes to a stop. Harvick says we've made gains on this run, but the car is still on the free side. You can see the adjustment has already been completed. The 11 of Denny Hamlin, now he was tight the first run, and he is away with an air pressure change. Krista? Jimmy Johnson running so strong at one of his favorite racetracks. He said he started this run like a lot of other guys, too free. So they don't want to make a big adjustment. Don't take a big swing this time, Matt. And the 18 of Kyle Busch making his way to his pit stall. Now he was telling Dave Rogers the car has really changed during this run, more so because of the racetrack is changing. They're going to make an adjustment to try to have the grip in the front tires last longer into a run. Air pressure changes. The call is see that, yes, they are going to make a chassis adjustment as well, Mike. 106 laps complete. He could have gone another four or five laps, but as Larry pointed out earlier, and Matt Kenseth comes to pit road, the longer you wait to come in, everybody's going faster on new tires. This is exactly what happened on the last cycle of green flag pit stops. Kyle Busch, the 18, pitted, handed the lead to his teammate, Matt Kenseth, in the 20. Matt ran an additional lap. And one of the things you cannot stand here is a loose race car. You are so focused staying off that wall and get, trying to make speed around here. If the car's loose, you're in big trouble. Matt? Now, Mike, opposite of Kyle Busch, who had issues in the front of the race car, Matt Kenseth says he's losing the grip on the rear of the car. He was trying to save his tires as long as he could during this run. The adjustment has already been completed. When pit stops began, Kyle Busch had a 2.9 second lead over Matt Kenseth. We'll see how that sorts out when everybody gets back up to speed here. 
one hundred seven laps into the Southern 500 with two Toyotas and three Chevys in the top five green flag all the way so far in Darlington County. Brad Keselowski was 12th. He's come to pit road, Matt. Unscheduled, and he said you've got a vibration. Kevin Busker called him in. They're going to change all four tires so that way they can make sure they don't miss it. He'd run about 10 to 12 laps when he finally decided to bring it back to pit road. So let's take an inside look at what's happening in the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series brought to you by Sprint. Kyle Busch has the fastest lap of this race back on lap number two. Get unlimited access to NASCAR with the NASCAR Mobile 13 app and truly unlimited data from Sprint. No metering, no throttling, no overages. Learn more at Sprint.com slash speed. One thing I noticed about the 18 of Kyle Busch and the 20 of Matt Kenseth is Kyle does not wait on traffic. He gets by them. He doesn't wait on anybody. He gets right up on them, lets them know I'm coming through. Matt's a little more cautious. I tell you what else he wasn't waiting on. Remember on our last set of green flag pit stops, what this is, the two laps, including the green flag stop, you see Kyle Busch right there second behind Matt Kenseth. Remember Casey Kane, he was the quickest in that last set of sequence of green flag pit stops, the two laps, including the stop. Now, because Bush stopped a lap before Kenseth, he came in with a 2.9 second lead, and after both had stopped, he had a four second lead. He picked up a second and a half. But Kenseth is closing that gap. It's now down to 2.3 seconds as you look at the wheels and tires that came off Brad Keselowski's car. Yeah, on that unscheduled stop. They're looking at the uh, holes. If the, if the wheel was loose, it'll oblong those. Uh, Holes where the studs go, and that's what they're checking out now to see if they can tell if the wheel was loose and how loose it was. Matt? Mike, the good news is Brad is telling the team the vibration has disappeared, but they, they've centered in looking at the left rear wheel. Yeah, and the good thing about trying to catch that early in a run, if you just keep going and going and going and then that wheel is loose, it's going to absolutely kill those lug studs. Kozlowski's gone two laps down. As the sun sets in Darlington County over the turn four grandstand and we transition to darkness at 118 green flag laps. Kyle Busch in front of Matt Kenseth by 2.3 seconds. 124 laps complete and the caution is out for debris in turn number two. It's the first caution of the night. And Kyle Busch's lead of 2.77 seconds disappears. Here's your STP race summary. 16 lead lap cars. That'll increase by one as, uh, with the free pass. One caution flag. This is it. The Bush brothers have led all but four laps tonight. Those were led by Matt Kenseth. And Ryan Newman is the Aaron's lucky dog on the first caution. You don't need credit. All you need is Aaron's. Maybe Ryan can relax a little bit now. You know, Mike, we were on record pace. I mean, we were breaking it for 100 miles right on up the line. We were at a record speed there, 158 plus miles an hour average speed at dawn. Tonight's telecast produced by Dot Landis' son and directed by Edna Kempner's son. Happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. Yes, sir, As Margaret. their big day is tomorrow don't anticipate a lot of different strategies here. We have 16, now 17 drivers on the lead lap. It's been 20 to 30 laps since they last pitted. I think all drivers will pit for four tires. The driver I'm going to be interested in watching is Brad Keselowski in that two who is two laps down. They may roll the dice here and try to do that wave around. Here they come to pit road, Steve. Casey Kane just telling his crew, Mike, that his car has loosened up, but it's better, and they have contemplated back and forth whether or not to make any changes. They're going to make a small track bar adjustment to that number five of Casey Kane. Krista. Steve, Jimmy Johnson asked his crew chief, Chad Canals, for a different direction. Chad told him we did two different things. That last stop was our other direction. So they're calling an audible here, Matt. 
leader Kyle Busch told Dave Rogers he expects the racetrack to change again. So make an adjustment on this 18 machine to tighten me up for the next run. Meanwhile, the 20 of Kenza telling his team the car went away balance wise much faster. So you've got to make a big change on this stop. I think we may have had one gambler, Denny Hammond and his 11 team. I think they went with just the two right side tires. You see it right there. He gained eight positions coming off pit road. Must be banking on a quick caution here. 126 laps complete in the Bojangles Southern 500. 28 laps. So here's an inside look at what's happening in the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series. Brought to you by Sprint. The last time Kurt Busch led this many laps in a single race was Dover, October 2011, and he went on to win. Get unlimited access with the NASCAR Mobile 13 app and no metering, no throttling, and no overages on the Sprint Network. Learn more at Sprint.com slash speed. In eight seasons, Furniture Row Racing, including the 11 laps they led here in winning at Darlington, led a total of 48 laps, and this year, with Kurt Busch behind the wheel, they have more than doubled that. Might have Sert on the side of the car, but they're not a sleeper this year. <laughs> Since 1950, they've raced at Darlington, and one of the wildest moments in the history of this racetrack came in 1965. This is Cale Yarborough going up, up, and over. Sam McQuaid and Cale Yarborough. I was sitting at home, 1965, watching on TV. Never seen anything like that in my life. Yarborough would go on to win a lot of races here at Darlington, and three consecutive championships in what's now the Sprint Cup Series. He still lives about a dozen miles from the racetrack in Darlington. Yeah, we always talk about David Pearson, and this is sort of his racetrack, but Kill would disagree with you wholeheartedly. Mike Darrell, it looks like we're going to have about seven drivers that did not pit. It had been anywhere from about 15 to 20 laps. But remember, one of those drivers, Brad Keselowski, in that two car had just been on pit road uh, about 10 laps ago. I think what these drivers and our teams are thinking, there's nine drivers that are one lap down. All of these drivers, except for David Rudiman in the 83, are two laps down. I think they feel like this is the best way to get one of those laps back. What do you crew chiefs study? Trends. Trends. Then trends tell me cautions breed cautions. cautions, and we're right in that window. And add to that group, uh, Travis Quapple, who gets back on the lead lap as he comes around. Michael? Uh, guys, I think it'd be really interesting to see if this team, with its interim crew chief, Kevin Buskirk, if they can orchestrate a rally like we see Paul Wolf and Brad Keselowski do so often. That's what I think of when I think of that two car overcoming adversity and that relationship between Paul Wolf, his crew chief and Brad Keselowski. He's got a new guy behind the uh, uh, running the show tonight. Can that happen again? They're going to get one lap back here. Will it will the cautions play out where they can take advantage of that or will this decision bite them? I can almost promise you. Paul Wolf made that call right there. <laughs> I got to say the same thing, Larry. <laughs> there is no question. He can't be on the premises, but obviously through a lot of technology. Uh, we even heard that Jason Ratcliffe, the crew chief for Matt Kenseth, suspended for one race. He has a command center sent up at Joe Gibbs Racing that he's pretty much communicating with his race They're team. They're probably out here at the Speedway Grill having a hamburger They said station. he was at the strawberry <laughs> farm today. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Getting set for the restart, and two Joe Gibbs teammates will restart on the front row. In green, Kyle Busch. In red and white, Denny Hamlin. Behind them, Casey Kane in the third Gibbs car with Matt Kenseth. Then Jimmy Johnson, Kurt Busch, Earnhardt, Gordon Harvick, and Stewart, the top ten, as we go back to green. Boy, this is a tense time. These restarts, double car side by side, mighty tight. Really anxious to see Denny Hamlin in that 11 car with about 20 laps on his tires, what he can do by just changing those right sides. Matt Kenseth looking for the low side and dropping in. So now time for a Fox Sports 1 Saturday night. Crank it up.
audio crew who won the Sports Emmy Award this year once again for best live event audio. Here is a familiar pattern. Joe Gibbs racing first, second, third. Furniture Row in fourth, and then Hendrick Motorsports right behind. Yeah, there were a lot of, you know, a lot of fans were complaining last night about Kyle Busch run, running away with the nationwide rat race last night and the dominance of the Gibbs cars. Well, looks like it's the same story again tonight. And the two teams that between them have won all but two races in this young season are up toward the front again. I, I do feel like this car has opened and given other the smaller teams some opportunities. We've seen some really single car teams in 78. We've seen Richard Petty Motorsports. We've seen a lot of teams that have struggled with the old car seem to have a shot or at least be in the hunt with this new car. Better than they have been in the past. Speaking of pass, there goes Jimmy Johnson in that 48 car, passes Denny Hamlin for the fourth spot. Darrell, you talked about Tony Stewart in the pre-race show. He's kind of crept up on us here. Started back in the 20th position. He has cracked the top 10 up into ninth. One of only two Sprint Cup Series tracks he's not won at here in Kentucky Speedway. Well, I, I've said a couple of times that I didn't see any panic in that group. I believe right now there's panic, but it's back in the shop, and they're keeping it under wraps. But I think there's a lot going on behind the scenes with these uh, with these Stuart Haas cars. Steve? Yeah, his car has been tight all night. Tony Stewart's has, Mike. And just before the caution came out, he said the car is finally starting to loosen up and the track starting to come to him. Well, and, and Steve, we're, we're getting into now darkness. This track has went through another transition, another major change. It's really cooling down. It's starting to gain a lot of grip. This is where they have to get a little aggressive with those changes. Yeah, and this is where the crew chief early on in this race, Larry, we were talking about it. You've got to tell the driver, just hold on. Everything's going to be fine. When it gets dark and the track cools off, you're going to be in good shape. Matt Kenseth trying and edging up on his teammate Kyle Busch by hundreds of a second per lap. Two weeks from tomorrow night, go to the 600 at Charlotte right here on NASCAR on Fox. Now, Denny Hamlin has dropped back a few spots. Jeff Gordon and now Dale Earnhardt Jr. have passed Hamlin. Here's the Gordon pass. See, Denny just washes up the hill right there. Doesn't have the grip that uh, these other guys have with four tires, and they just go right by him. So now Clint Boyer closes in, and that two-tire change for Hamlin gained him track position. But it doesn't look like the caution is coming anytime soon enough for that to pay off. Yeah, you just can't get back to the gas as quick as guys that have four tires. You just don't have that center of the corner grip that you need to be able to accelerate up off the corner with a lot of speed. Hamlin is still two to the good. He pitted from 10th place, took two tires, and is now struggling to hold on to eighth. So still, he's two spots to the good from where he came in. Well, and to Daryl's point, as he is absolutely all the way against the wall, they were hoping maybe for a fairly quick caution. Matt. And Larry Mackey also asked a favor of his teammate, Kyle Busch, that on the restart, Kyle would take the lane choice of the outside. That way, Denny, on those only right side tires, wouldn't get freight train. Right now, Darian Grubb tells him, you're just going to have to hang on. I know the balance is off, but you're just going to have to hang on until we get our next stop. Right now, I don't think it matters if Kyle Busch restarts on the bottom or the top. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but I would like to have him as a teammate. <laughs> Again, last year, first caution after 172 laps. We had one caution in the first half of the race last year, seven caution flags in the second half of the race. Yeah, that's what this joint does to you. I mean, you'll go along here, you'll give and take. You'll let a guy in. You'll back off and give him some room. But as it gets near the end of this race, that's all over with. Plus, the speeds normally pick up as we cool down and gain more grip. I've been watching the fall off, Larry. We were about two seconds there when the sun was out or when it was daylight. Now we're about a second and a half. Third place, Jimmy Johnson. Passing Kurt Busch. Two Chevys, uh, three Chevys, two Toyotas now in the top five. And the first Ford is Carl Edwards in 13th. You know, we talked in the pre-race about Kyle Busch in the 18 car. And did he need to back it down a little bit? He's got two wins. I think that's the confidence that team has right now. We're going to race hard. We're going to go for three wins, four wins. We know we're going to make the chase, or at least we're pretty comfortable at this time we will. 
Kyle Busch has now led 72 laps. That's more than anyone else has led tonight. You're watching NASCAR on Fox. Play Fox Fantasy Racing, presented by Ford. Pick your team of five drivers each week. Compete for prizes all season long. Sign up today at foxsports.com slash fantasy and pick your winning team. Casey Kane has climbed to fourth. That's Jimmy Johnson in third. Kane to fourth and Jeff Gordon to fifth. Kurt Busch back to sixth. So it's Joe Gibbs Toyota's first and second. Hendrick Chevrolet's third, fourth, and fifth at 152 laps. Matt Kenseth drifting back a bit. Now three seconds behind his teammate Kyle Busch and Jimmy Johnson closing in on second place. Kenseth led four laps tonight. Jimmy Johnson has not yet led. But the defending champ of this race poised in third and closing. Casey he's, Kane yeah. right here. He's been running some pretty fast lap times compared to to uh, Kyle Busch and uh, Matt Kenseth. He's a couple of tenths quicker right now. He and Jeff Gordon both are a little quicker than our leaders. Yeah, three laps ago, Gordon moved his Chevrolet into the top five after starting eighth. Yeah, I think clearing J.J. Yaley. Kurt Busch in the 78 car, we know how bad loose he was on that last run. I think they've made it better, but I still think they need a little more adjustment. He's sitting here in the sixth position. Dale Earnhardt Jr. on his first run tonight said the car had really good balance, but he needed more rear grip. Apparently he's got it. He's climbed to seven. As I watch Jr., uh, Mike, he runs a really conservative line. He's, uh, he looks like he's holding back a little bit to me. Got a little something in the tank. I think those two right side tires that Denny Hamlin and Darian Grubb elected to change, I think it's kind of leveled off now because he's sitting in eighth running pretty decent lap times. And as we pointed out, that's two positions ahead of where he came in. Uh, Kevin Harvick, now ninth, 10 seconds back of the lead. And Clint Boyer in 10th. Yeah, I think the 11 car, just put that in the old memory bank for maybe later on. Two tires, not terrible. And Pablo Montoya battled hard against Harvick for position, but now finds himself in 11th uh, with Tony Stewart one second behind Montoya's Chevrolet. Here's Stewart in 12th. Now behind Tony Stewart, Carl Edwards in that 99 car. He's actually the top running four driver right now back in 13th. Kind of like where the 14 of Tony Stewart and 99 of Carl Edwards are, though. I watch your lap times. They're not that far off, and they don't seem to be pressing. They seem to be riding along to pretty conservative. Paul Menard, all these cars about a third of a lap behind race leader Kyle Busch. Menard in 14th position. Joey Logano is a lap down, so here is Martin Truex Jr., 15th after starting fifth. Yeah, he ran up in the top five and top ten a lot, but he, he almost got into the wall right in the middle of turn three and four there, but they've gotten a little off of that 56. Yeah, he's fallen way back from where they were when they started, the 56 of Truex. Greg Biffle is the 16th place car. Two laps ago, his Ford almost got into it with a 34 David Reagan right there as Biffle lost grip up in the corner. Yeah, he had to get out of the throttle, and David Reagan in a 34, he... he did a great job of not running over Greg Biffle. Jeff Burton a lap down on the 31. So Ryan Newman is the 17th place car. And he's the Travis. driver that got the free pass on that last caution, Newman in the 39. Earnhardt's car definitely better as he passes Kurt Busch and picks up sixth place. Last car on the lead lap is Travis Quapel, who took the free pass last time. He is 18th and the final lead lap car. There's Travis Whoa. and his Toyota. He was, man, he was flirting with that wall. So that would mean Joey Logano is the first car one lap down, then Jamie McMurray and Jeff Burton. Kyle Busch's lead, now two seconds. Matt Kenseth beginning to reel him in once again. And, and, and this is something I've seen kind of, looks like Matt's car is a good long run car, and Matt doesn't force the issue. He passes people nice and clean doesn't put himself in any jeopardy
161 complete, 206 laps to go in Darlington. Kyle Busch's lead is shrinking. Glad you're watching NASCAR on Fox from Darlington Raceway here in South Carolina. Joe Gibbs Racing led by Kyle Busch and Matt Kenseth. Look out because here comes Casey Kane, Jimmy Johnson, and Jeff Gordon. And that's Hendrick Motorsports putting some pressure on. And by the way, Kyle's won the most laps. But here at Darlington, the leader of the most laps has failed to win three of the last four races on this track they call Too Tough to Tame. Along with uh, Michael Waltrip, Chris Myers, we talk about one of the other things, the lady in black earning a Darlington stripe or scraping up against that wall. We haven't had many of those so far, Michael, but the business may pick up. Yeah, check out our rookie here, Ricky Stenhouse. He gets a little bit loose into the corner. And watch, Chris, sideways, sideways, catches the wall in the back, and then that turns the front into the outside wall. That's probably a part of the reason why a rookie has never won here because of how challenging this place is. But I'm telling you, Action's gonna build. This is a marathon. It takes a lot to run 500 miles at Darlington. You gotta be mentally tough all night long. And as the race develops and goes forward, these guys are gonna get more and more aggressive. You saw the count uh, near the Bojangles Southern 500 sign of up to six. And as you pointed out, Michael, only one caution so far. That's another thing that's gonna pick up as this race goes on. Kyle Busch, your leader over Matt Kenseth now by just one second. Casey Kane has passed teammate Jimmy Johnson to move into third. Danica Patrick has made a four-tire pit stop under green. Only three cars out of the race. Mike Bliss, Michael McDowell, and Scott Speed. 17 lead lap cars back to Ryan Newman. And one of the cars that took the wave around, Travis Quapel, has made his pit stop. Brad Keselowski is going to be due here shortly. Yeah, he's going to have to be on pit road, I'd say, within the next three to five laps. He has been maintaining pace with what the leaders are running, but he needed that caution. Krista. Yeah, Montoya's really been struggling with the handling of his race car. Most recently, he said he's just too tight in turn three, and he can't lean on his car in one and two. They've made adjustments every stop. 197 laps to go. Enter for a chance to win the all-new 2014 Chevy Silverado LTZ. Plus a VIP Chevy racing experience for two. Meet and greet Chevy driver Tony Stewart. Visit winthenewsilverado.com to enter. You know, it's funny how Tony Stewart operates. So you just think about it. I don't think he wakes up until summer gets here. Because early in the year, he's just kind of a non-factor. And we've seen this time and time again. But when it starts to get hot and the tracks get slick, the weather gets heating up and he takes off. You know, we thank Denny Hamlin for sitting in with us last week at Talladega through a long day and into the evening. And thanks to those of you who were watching all day and our Fox stations for staying with us. You listen in on Denny's progress tonight. Jimmy, do everything I got there. Hang in there. How many more laps I gotta go? Struggling. South 15, bud. You're running laps right there with the leaders right there. You're doing good. And he's talking about he physically isn't struggling. He struggled with those two tires. Yeah, I think that they'd have ever known this thing was going to cycle through another set of green flag stops, 50 plus laps. They have not made that move right there. He is, uh, what was that, 68 points behind 20th if you are in the top 20 and have the most wins from positions 11 through 20. You win a spot in the chase by the time we get to Richmond. And uh, Hamlin being out for several races, his chances at being in the top 10 by the time we get to Richmond are gone. He's going to have to win some races and be in the top 20 to make the chase. One, the, one of the things that worries me about that 11 car, Mike, is remember the gremlins they had last year. Martinsville comes them out with an ignition switch, air pressure at New Hampshire. A lot of little things. They're going to have to be perfect for the next 16 races, plus get a couple of wins. So Hamlin running in ninth. Kurt Busch, our pole sitter, led 69 laps. But he has struggled after, well, I'd say, Matt, from the first pit stop on, they've been struggling to catch back up. Absolutely, Mike. Now, Kurt says when the racetrack was green and didn't have any rubber on it, he had tremendous grip and the car was fast. But as each run progresses, they're losing more and more of 
the grip. He says, on a scale of 1 to 10, we are an 11 loose. He said, unless you make a huge adjustment on our next stop, we are going to be junk. He says, this racetrack is really taking a big swing. And I think that's something I heard across the board. These cars don't tighten up. They get looser. And uh, that's something everybody's fighting tonight. I would say within the next five to 10 laps, we're gonna see a lot of our lead lap drivers be hitting pit road. The one that I, I felt like would probably be coming any time now would be Brad Keselowski, that too, but I think they're gonna go just as far as they can, hoping to get a caution and get that, basically be back one lap down. Right, Keselowski's stop was 14 laps before the rest of the lead lap cars came in at the caution on lap 126. One thing I'm seeing with the uh, 18 car, Mike, is that, that he is struggling. Kyle Busch is struggling in traffic. Matt Kent's in the 20 car. He's there, and we got Steve Pitt. Well, DW, Clint Boyer says the front tires just do not feel like they're in the track. He just needs more grip. Matt. And Denny Hamlin, former winner here, darling, he's in his stop. Remember we told you he was on the right side tires. The balance had gone away. They're going to make an air pressure change on this 11. Meanwhile, farther up here road, the two of Brad Keselowski, he is in. He said his car absolutely has gone back to the loose side. Steve. Paul Menard in the 27 says, I am way too loose to run any higher in the turns. So they're going to make a track bar adjustment for tires for Menard in the 27. David Strebe, Eric Almarola, Marcus Ambrose, and Kurt Busch coming to pit road. And as we've seen on every one of these green flag cycles, as Kyle Busch has a tough time getting around Mark Martin, if you don't pit when the leaders start to pit, it's going to cost you on the clock. But that's what I'm seeing with the 18, Mike. I guess the handle's gone off enough. He's close to a stop here. Kyle Busch is not getting through traffic quite as simple and easy as the 20 of Matt Kenseth is. Krista. Juan Pablo Montoya talking about how he feels like the right rear tire is doing all the work. Meanwhile, Martin Truex asking him to go back on the wedge. He has zero front grip. He said his race car was so tight that he couldn't get back in the gas in turn three. Matt? Kurt Busch in the very first pit stall on pit road. Todd Barrier will try to fix this race car. Significant adjustment on the right side. Chassis wise, he's making a big swing, Steve, with air pressure in the right rear. And Matt Dale Earnhardt Jr. peeling off away from his pit stall. He says his car is running much better in the low group, and he's got confidence. He says that 88 is competitive. Still, six lead lap cars have not stopped. Matt? And Kevin Harvick is in, following the trend of most cars tonight. The car is still free on this run. No chassis adjustment for Harvick. Edwards and Stewart in. That leaves only Kyle Busch, Kenseth, Kane and Johnson out on the racetrack, Steve. Mike Tony Stewart now saying that he needs more grip. That car has loosened up. The track has loosened up. He's been tight most of the night. He just needs more grip. Matt. 99, Steve, of Carl Edwards. He said his car felt a little bound up during that run. It was tight off turn four. He was adjusting his style of having to get back in the gas to try to help the exit. He's away. That was a great example. You just saw Brad yeah. Keselowski, that two, just fly by Kyle Busch in the 18. That's fresh tires versus 50 or 55 lap tires. Yeah, and that's when that driver the 18 car, Kyle Busch, is screaming, how much longer do I got to stay out? I'm going to get run over. So now Casey Kane and Jimmy Johnson come to the pit lane, leaving just the Gibbs Toyotas of Busch and Kenseth out on the racetrack, Steve. Kenny Francis counts them in. Casey Kane simply says his car is loose. They're going to make a wedge adjustment on that five car. Krista. Jimmy Johnson asking his crew chief, Chad Canales, for one thing on this stop, security. That's what he needs to feel this race car, specifically in turn three. They're going to do that with a wedge adjustment. You see the crew making the stop change right there. Matt Kenseth is coming onto pit road, and he locked him up. Slid the tires coming onto pit lane, getting down to pit road speed. And now just the leader, Kyle Busch, among the lead lap cars, is still on the racetrack. He has to come this time because, I mean, he is lo losing two to two and a half seconds a lap, and I think we're seeing him hit pit road this time. All right, Matt Kenseth to his pit box as Kyle Busch enters pit lane. So there, if you're working this race backwards, is Kyle trying to get into some sort of window? 
that he'll be able to use later on in the race by staying out these extra laps? It's still so many laps to go and so many stops. I don't know that that's the case right now. Matt. And for the 20 of Kenseth, his car was way too free and getting worse on entry and exit. That's why you saw the big chassis adjustment. Meanwhile, the 18 of Kyle Busch slides to a stop. He wants Dave Rogers to make an air pressure change to try to keep up with this racetrack. Remember he told you at the top of the show that was his big concern after running the Nationwide race. A little trouble getting that left rear off. The track just being way too free. Darrell, I just think the lead he had, he was he was playing a little bit of game just trying to trap these guys. Yeah, let's go back and look at Matt Kenseth coming on to pit road. You see Matt here, and this is this this is as treacherous a pit road to get on. Off the racetrack, lock it down. There's the commitment cone. Look at that. Sliding those tires all the way, almost hit the end of pit wall right wow. there. Well, there. waiting so long to pit has cost Kyle Bush the lead. There's your new leader Jeff Gordon after green flag pit stops with Jimmy Johnson second and Kyle now third Kenseth fourth Kane in fifth Denny Hamlin sixth. Yeah Jeff Gordon pitted five laps sooner than Kyle Busch. Mike that's probably 10 or 11, 12, 11 or 12 seconds he gained right there. But here he comes. <laughs> 181 laps to go. And sparks fly at Darlington. Jeff Gordon, your new leader. Time now for the AT&T Midrace Report. Chris Myers, I'm glad you're watching with us from Darlington. And Jeff Gordon, a four-time champion, only a third place finish his best this year, but he's won here seven times, and he has moved into the lead in this, his 700th consecutive career start. Kyle Busch dominating the first half of this race, Darrell, leading in excess of 100 laps. In the other two races where he led the most laps this year, he won both of those. Those were his only two wins. Chris, I've seen this act before. Kyle Busch, he loves to do the clean sweep. I believe tonight, Kyle Busch will do it again. That's a good look, bro. But I'm going to take Jeff Gordon. I like the fact that he wasn't great at the start of the race, just solid. Started in the top 10, remain there. Now as the track's gone through another transition, the dark, cool conditions, he seems fast. I know special athletes do special things on special nights. Big night for Jeff Gordon. I think he gets it done. Michael, I know Kyle Busch has dominated this race, but the driver you better watch, Jimmy Johnson in that 48, got that 200th win for Hendrick Motorsports last year. He always shines in the end. Keep an eye on him, Steve. Well, Eric, they got keep an eye on his teammate, Dale Earnhardt Jr. They've made very small changes to that race car this evening. In fact, the biggest change, Dale Earnhardt Jr. has gone from running the high side to the low side. And Mike Joy, he has confidence in that race car. Well, Matt Kenseth's best finish here is third seven years ago. But the more I see him lead when the car wants to lead, not take unnecessary chances, he reminds me so much here of David Pearson. And Chris, nobody's won more here than Pearson. Great success in South Carolina. Last week's upset winner, David Reagan, finding it tough going here. The driver of the 34 car is now four laps down tonight. Meanwhile, Carl Edwards we're keeping an eye on. Twice he's been his second here. He's been in the top 15, said he had a fast car all night, waiting to make his move. And Denny Hamlin returning from the back injury, his first full-time ride since the end of March, as high as second, currently running sixth, hoping to hang in there all the way to the finish of this 500-mile race. That's your AT&T mid-race report with Jeff Gordon leading Kyle Busch, Jimmy Johnson, Casey Kane, and Matt Kenseth. And we'll have more with everybody watching and hoping for the best on top. One hundred sixty four laps to go. Look at the run Kyle Busch got coming off turn number two to pull alongside Jeff Gordon. But he does not complete the pass here. No, but he's got the position. And what I want you to watch as they go down the front here, they're going to come off turn four here side by side. This is smart Darlington racing. Watch, watch what Jeff Gordon in the 24 does right in the middle of the straightaway. Let's up and let's Kyle Busch get in line so they don't race each other into turn one and jeopardize either one of their position. So now Jeff Gordon has Jimmy Johnson right on his tail and Casey Kane closing in. But that's what you do here. I know people at home say, oh, he didn't let up. I'm telling you, that's what you do here. You let them pass on a straightaway. It's the safest place. You don't get in trouble. Sure, Daryl. The risk-reward ratio of going into turn one side by side, not good. No, I mean, just one slip and you're both wrecked.
And Gordon catches back up a little bit as Kyle Busch needed a little extra time getting past David Reagan. That's the one thing I see Kyle struggle a little bit with. There are, it just seems like at times he has trouble passing lap cars. And they're going to fight him a little harder than they would anyone else because he's the leader. That too, Larry. Jimmy Johnson to the inside on his Hendrick Chevy teammate, Jeff Gordon. And again, not, not wishing to take that chance coming off turn number four. Right now, his lap times are faster than Kyle Busch in that 18 car. Passing J.J. Yaley over 170 miles an hour into turn one. Now the back straightaway. And that's a turn one's very difficult. You go in with the wheel, left wheels on the apron, car goes up the hill, and you got to catch it with the throttle. Not the brake, you got to catch it with the throttle. 177 miles an hour entering turn three. And both straightaways are the same length, 1,229 uh, feet, but it's the difference in the size of the turns, the shape of the turns. There's Casey Kane currently fourth. Brad Keselowski's, that wave around has paid off for the Blue Deuce. Keselowski is now in the free pass position, which means should the caution come out, he'd be back on the lead lap. He's the first car one lap down. 159 laps to go and looking over across the track toward turn three for Jeff Hammond. Well, Mike, I've got an opportunity to come outside this racetrack, and guys, I've been coming here since 1975. I've never watched a race from here. It's incredible watching these drivers challenge this racetrack and seeing really how daring they are about running so close to the wall, but at the same time, how this Gen 6 car is allowing them to pick and choose a high line or to run a low line coming through three and four. I was watching that pass between the 24 of Jeff Gordon as well as Kyle Busch a few laps ago. It was incredible to watch Kyle basically set him up, get that position through this part of the racetrack, how close they are, but again, how fast they are around this Darlington Speedway. It's incredible. We're being covered by rubber and debris and basically stuff coming off the racetrack. We're so close. It's incredible with this position down here in three and four. And Jeff, Mike, do you all remember when that press box over there, it, it was wide open and the press set up there and they ate that <laughs> dirt and rubber just like everybody else did. That's right. But I think just the amount of downforce that this Generation 6 car has, it, it gives the driver the ability to be able to turn to the bottom if he feels like he needs to or can. I, I think, Larry, uh, tonight it's been amazing. We have had very few cars even get the Darlington stripe. We've yep. had a few, but normally it's a rash of them. You know, everybody has some right side damage. Not tonight. Yeah, we had seven of them in practice and one driver go to a backup car. But one reason we may not be seeing that quite as much, too, these drivers know that 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 lip that uh, sticks out over the fenders and front and rear fenders, uh, that thing gets bent in, it messes up the whole right side of the car. Riding with Kevin Harvick, currently ninth. Jimmy Johnson has another try at teammate Jeff Gordon and goes past for second place. So Johnson now 1.3 seconds off the lead. Kyle Busch out in front in the Bojangles Southern 500 on Fox. 148 laps to go in Darlington, South Carolina. David Stremme made a pit stop. Danica Patrick on pit road as Kyle Busch leads Jimmy Johnson by 1.6 seconds. Johnson has motored half a second away from Casey Kane. Then Matt Kenseth has passed Jeff Gordon for fourth. Gordon rounds out the top five, followed by Denny Hamlin. Let's look at Kenseth in fourth. It'll be Gordon fifth. And boy, for Denny Hamlin, whoa, -ho -ho, Marcus Ambrose, hold on. There behind Stenhouse. A little wild slide. They're off turn number four. Turn four is getting right treacherous, losing a little grip down there, look to me like. A lot of guys are having trouble there. Here comes Kyle Busch against the 31 of Jeff Burton, who will go two laps down and at the line. How about a Fox Sports 1 Saturday night? Crank it up.
44 laps to go. You're riding with Clint Boyer coming up on Denny Hamlin. When we last saw Hamlin, he was eighth after that two-tire stop. Uh, he settled in eighth. He had come into the pits 10, settled in eighth. And now that everything cycled around, Larry, that's worked out pretty well for the 11. Yeah, what really worked out is he was certainly, you heard him ask Darian Grubb how much longer before I make that stop because he was really sliding around. Since he was one of the first drivers to hit pit road on that cycle of green flag stops, he got advantage of those fresh tires, and he's kind of settled in here just outside the top five. And then Mike and, and Larry, I mean, we broke the track record at almost 182 miles an hour, and right now we're on record pace for being the fastest Southern 500 ever. So not only did we break the track record, these cars are setting a blistering pace around the track. The driver who broke Casey Kane's track record was Kurt Busch in the 78 in qualifying and led most of the first 69 laps of this race, but then drifted as low as 15th, started falling back after the first pit stop and on the radio expressed his disappointment. I don't know what we got going on here, but we're not making any headway. Unbelievable. Everything we do, man, cars just freezing up, coming up out of the track. And so Bush now finds himself in 10th, 15 seconds off the lead and got dangerously close to or into the wall that time by. Yeah, you know, it's one thing to get physically tired. Uh, that that oh. takes its toll. And uh, when you get mentally tired, you start to make, you make, mistakes in this place you've got to be on your very best game for 500 miles around here Darrell, we talked about the fender flares on these cars Larry, i think i was seeing a little tire haze out of that 78 on the right side well the handling has definitely went away but the good thing is we are getting close to what will be green flag stops again here just in the next few laps as kurt bush rides 10th his brother kyle leads this race trying for the weekend sweep and he's talked about how track conditions they're changing it's really losing grip man it's like the racetrack's losing a lot of grip just can't really hold it where i want to hold it it's a little tight it's a little loose same as last run i think at the end it just seemed like a magnified sooner well, what I like that he said there, he had the experience of that race last night, so he kind of knew a little bit what to expect, but it sounds like it's happening a little sooner in this race than last night. Yeah, it's, it's the racetrack. I believe once it really cools down and the track goes to another change, you're just losing a little bit of grip. Jeff Burton, Landon Castle, and J.J. Yaley on pit road. Kyle Busch, your leader, with 1.38 to go. Kyle Busch, your leader, up two seconds on Jimmy Johnson. He has now lapped Ryan Newman, the 17th place car. That takes Brad Keselowski out of the free pass position, which now belongs to the 39 of Newman, the first car one lap down. So pit stops beginning to happen here and penalties. Um, Travis Quapple too fast entering and J.J. Yaley tire got away from their crew. They had to come back in. David Stremme taking his car to the garage. Matt? And you see the 38 car on pit road, but the 16 car, Greg Biffle, he's in as well. They've already completed the track bar adjustment, Mike. He said that the car is simply has no grip. It's really weird on different ends of the racetrack. At one point, Steve, it's tight, and then it's loose. And that's Paul Menard saying, I cannot get off the corners, and we're too loose in big wedge adjustment. extremely displeased right now with his car because he is the tightest his car has been all night. Track bar adjustment being made, zero grip. That's what Martin says he has on the racetrack right now. Matt? And the 29 of Kevin Harvick, the one place he hasn't won that he would like for a crown jewel win. Gil Martin calling for a possible wedge adjustment or track bar adjustment. Harvick says the car really consistent during this run, but still consistently loose. You can see the adjustment taking place. The two of Brad Keselowski is in. He said at the beginning of the run, the car was a four to five on the tight scale. And then it went the opposite on the loose scale. The 78 of Kurt Busch, he's in. Chassis adjustment completed. His car wicked free. Steve. Matt Clipboyer is saying his car is not bad. It's just tight in traffic. Four tires. They'll make an air pressure adjustment. Fill it full of fuel. Four tires for Montoya. In and out. 
Kenny Hamlin coming. Yeah, Clint Boyer's pit stop was all off sequence because Timmy Hill was in that pit box behind him when he came in. Steve. Dale Earnhardt Jr. saying, I cannot get through turns one and two like I was earlier. I just don't feel like the rear of the car is into the track. They'll make an air pressure adjustment. You saw the chassis adjustment. Dale Earnhardt Jr. is away. Matt. And Denny Hamlin comes to a stop telling his team, you can see they've got the, the wench, the red wench in the back window. He says, basically, I've lost the entry. The car is just absolutely loose, Steve. Tony Stewart saying, I need to be tighter on exit. Back to you, Matt. And the 99 of Carl Edwards, his car was tight earlier on off of turn four, but then it started to come back around really consistent like everyone else. The comments, the car's free. I don't know who the black flag's for. Uh, somebody's somebody getting black flag. Yeah, and that would be Clint Boyer. And we'll show you why he is getting the black flag. Boyer finishes up. Whoa, couldn't get that gas can out of the receptacle. And because it leaves the pit stall, that is a penalty for removing equipment from the pit. Steve. Jeff Gordon in. Four tires of fuel. They will make an air pressure You know, Larry, what I'm hearing is everybody's fighting an issue with handling right now, and I think it's just the track is so rubbered up. All these green flag laps, it's just rubbered the track up so much that it's really affecting the handling of these cars. Krista? Yeah, absolutely, DW. Right now for Jimmy Johnson, he has gotten loose specifically off of four. He's also just a little bit loose off two, so they did make an adjustment on this stop. Matt? And Krista, the 18 of Kyle Busch, you heard his comments earlier that the car had really gone to the free side. His teammate, Matt Kenseth, telling Wally Brown, you've got to make a huge change on this stop. The car started out way too free on this. Meanwhile, it's going to Steve. Matt Casey Kane says, loose, loose, loose. Says, help me out. Chassis adjustment for that five car, four tires. Matt. And they go to work on Kyle Busch's Toyota. Going to make a chassis adjustment as well as an air pressure change. Remember, the car much freer. He thinks the racetrack taking another big change at this juncture of the race, and he's away. Everybody running three seconds slower than their fastest lap of the race. No wonder they're complaining. Yeah, and, and the speeds are slow, but you know what happens, Mike, to a driver? As the night wears on and these long green runs, the car, you might be able to hang on to it and fight with it a little bit early in the race, but as the race wears on, you get a little tighter and you get a little close to that wall, you start to be a little more cautious and the car just, the handle doesn't in there for you. The big winner on pit stops, Kevin Harvick. He stopped five, six laps quick sooner than the other leaders and he puts himself into the top five. Egg-shaped oval where NASCAR has raced since 1950. Only one caution flag tonight, running record pace with Kyle Busch in front of Jimmy Johnson now by three quarters of a second. Casey Kane four seconds back, Matt Kenseth eight and a half down, Kevin Harvick 11 back. That's your top five. Then Jeff Gordon, Denny Hamlin, Bernhard Stewart, and pole sitter Kurt Busch. Mike, we're averaging 151 miles an hour this far into this race. Now, Clint Boyer had a problem on pit road and uh, falls to 17th after having to make a penalty pass down the pit lane. Good news, he's the first driver one lap down. Should we get a caution, he would get that free pass. But what happened earlier to Brad Keselowski, we kept going under green and Kyle Busch, the leader, just kept putting more and more drivers a lap down. Danica Patrick, third woman to run a cup race at Darlington, four laps back. And in the 29th position. In a backup car and uh, yep. just doing a yeoman's job here, just staying out of trouble and logging laps. Bringing home in one piece. Carl Edwards is 10th. He's the highest forward in the race. Kurt Busch, the pole sitter, right behind him. Kurt had a great first stint before the first green flag pit stop. And then that team has just had less luck than others at keeping up with the changing racetrack. He's still on the lead lap, but he's 11th. 
And it's 22 seconds back of the lead. And Larry, when, I mean, the 78 doesn't have any teammates. He does have an affiliation with RCR. We know that. But right now, he, nobody can help him. I mean, who would Todd Barrier go to and say, hey, what'd y'all do that last top end? What I kind guess, of air pressure changes yeah, what did, did you, you make? Do to, yeah. Did you help the car? Did you hurt the car? So that's the downside of being out there by yourself. When I look at Kyle Busch in this 18 car, remember last year, 2012, only won one race and missed the chase. And in this season, Kyle had led the most laps nine times and failed to win. This is the third time he's led the most laps in a race in 2013. He won the two prior this year. Oh. Well, I think missing a chase was, I, I think it really motivated that team. They got much better after they missed the chase. Ryan Newman is back on the lead lap after that round of pit stops because of how late Kyle Busch waited to make his stop. Everybody else kind of gained on Kyle, so Ryan's trying to stay on the lead lap. Every single green flag run, Kyle Busch has been one of the very last cars to pit. What are they up to? Well, Daryl asked me this earlier, and ever since he asked me, I've had the calculator <laughs> and pencil and paper Smoke going. It. <laughs> and what I see, at least two of the Joe Gibbs drivers, Kyle Busch the 18, and Matt Kenseth in the 20, and three of the Hendrick drivers for sure, Jeff Gordon in the 24, Jimmy Johnson in the 48, and Casey Kane in the five. I think because they waited so late to pit these last two stops, if we see them go to about lap 304, 305, I think they're trying to make this race on one more stop should we go caution free. And then at this point, it just is all indications are. I mean, nothing's, I don't see any cautions. I don't see anything to cause a caution. But the trends sure do not show that here. Yes, last year we had four green flag stops, but eight caution flag stops. And there's when the last pit stop took place for our top five. But in the three years prior, 2009 through 11, we never had more than two green flag stops, and we had as many as 17 caution flag pit stops. And of those five, as you're riding with Kevin Harvick in the 29, he's the one, you saw how early he pitted at lap 237. I'm quite confident he can't make it on one more stop. No, but Larry, he had to do that to gain track position. They're racing for now, not for the end of Get the race. Get advantage of those fresh tires. But you're telling me what we've done in the past, and that's in the past, was well, this Gen 6 <laughs> car has changed everything. I think it's changed the pace of the race, the strategy of the race, and the way they run the racetrack. It's made a huge difference. To put a period on Kevin Harvick, he was ninth prior to pit stops, and by stopping early and getting a good stop, now he's in the top five. And what he and his crew chief, Gil Martin, may do is really short pit, come in much earlier than needed, and really try to get advantage of those fresh tires, knowing they're going to maybe have to pit twice. So if he gets there tonight, we'll know where he came from. <laughs> Better believe it. We're talking about Kyle Busch, and that's one thing that I think missing the chase last year. I think Dave Rogers really stepped up after the Richmond race where they got knocked out of the chase by Jeff Gordon. Dave and, and Kyle didn't even talk to each other for a week. But when they finally did, I think it really bonded those two guys together. And they have been almost perfect, other than some issues that they've had engine-wise and a couple of wrecks. They've been perfect as a driver-crew chief combination. Closing in on Martin Truex Jr., the 15th place car and the last car on the lead lap. I got my eye on the checkered flag. This is NASCAR on Fox. 99 laps to go in the heat of the night here in Darlington, South Carolina. Time for an AT&T race break, and Kyle Busch has dominated. He's led more than 175 laps in the 18 car. Worth pointing out, he has a couple of wins this year with Michael Walter, Chris Myers, and glad to have you watching. But twice before earlier in the year, he has had pit road problems that have cost him in races. But Joe Gibbs Racing, along with Kyle Busch, has uh, dominated tonight, Matt Kenseth as well. Yeah, we saw this car, Matt Kenseth, lead all of the race at Talladega, but couldn't get to victory lane. Can Kyle Busch close today? The previous two times this year when he led the most laps, he did win. Maybe he will again tonight. And the powerhouse teams, obviously Hendrick Motorsports, Jimmy Johnson won this last year. Casey Kane currently running third, and Jeff Gordon had the lead for a while. He's in the hunt as well. Yeah, all four of the Hendrick Motorsports cars up inside the top ten. Dell Jr. running long in eighth position. So you've got the Gibbs cars and the Hendrick cars up front with Richard Childress Racing's Kevin Harvick in the top five. But the lone Ford in the top ten is Carl Edwards, and he runs in that tenth spot. And Michael Waltrip Racing in the Toyotas. 
What kind of night have you give us your overview? Well, it's not what we expected, obviously. Uh, Clint Boyer had a strong car. You can see him here in the KFC boneless car. Um, had a penalty on pit road. The other two cars have struggled somewhat. Not surprising. I think a lot of people in the garage area felt like Truex had one of the best cars yesterday. But as we raced into the night and the track his conditions could change, he didn't keep up with the track as well as some of the others. For Kyle Busch, the sixth straight Darlington race that he has led at age 28. He has 26 cup wins. And a, a guy like when you look at Denny Hamlin, uh, who is riding in his first full time race. Remember back in 2010 off knee surgery, won his second race back. He's hanging in the top 10 in, in his Toyota. Toyota currently seven. Yeah, the guys talked about how mentally tough you have to be to fight through this race. We heard Denny really struggling on two tires that he took earlier when everybody else got four. He's got to stay mentally sharp. He hasn't been in a car in a while. And look, he's running inches away from that wall. Could be a real challenge for him to close this baby out, but a solid run so far. Tony Stewart, when the weather warms up, the three-time champ does. He's off to the worst start of his career. He's not panicking, although Darrell Waltrip said <laughs> on the pre-race show that some people on his staff at his crew, there may be some change. Well, and Tony, it's been warm down in South Carolina. And I think it motivates him. He's ready to go racing. He had a strong car at Richmond, struggled at Talladega, but now he's back in the top ten again. A little bit of a run for this team, and he very, very desperately needs it. Danica Patrick on the radio has been getting support from her crew saying hang in there keep working your way around the track everybody chasing Kyle Busch 12 cars on the lead lap at 94 laps to go here at Darlington Raceway. Let's take an inside look at what's happening in the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series brought to you by Sprint Kyle Busch has now led almost three times as many laps as older brother Kirk did at the start of the race. Get unlimited access to NASCAR with the NASCAR Mobile 13 app and truly unlimited data from Sprint. Learn more at Sprint.com slash speed. 87 laps to go, at least one more pit stop before we get to the checkered flag here in Darlington, South Carolina. Hats off to track president Chris Browning and his staff. They have packed the place on this Mother's Day weekend Saturday night. I'm so glad. This, this this track means so much to our sport, the history of it, and uh, the oldest super speedway. This is where it all started. Thank you, fans, and everybody for being here tonight. It means a lot. They are watching Kyle Busch put on a clinic. He's now lapped Paul Menard, Greg Biffle, and older brother Kurt Busch, leaving 11 cars on the lead lap. Yeah, he's just marching through this field. It's amazing. Uh, he gets a little held up every now and then in traffic, but for the most part, when he gets clear sailing, he's a couple of tenths better than Jimmy Johnson running to the second right now. Jeff Gordon just outside the top five in sixth place, closing up on Kevin Harvick, Steve. And it's just fresh off the wire, Mike. Jeff Gordon, a historical night, as we've said, 700th consecutive start. He's won here many times before, but right now, well, he's a little bit frustrated. Man, I don't know what to tell you. You know, it made me slightly better in one and two, but it hurt me in three and four. We just, we just, I don't know. We don't have it right now. So we'll keep digging. Harvard short pitted as his tires will fall off, and I don't think he'll make it on gas. Keep the pressure on him. Bad struggling up there. Just stay with it, bud. You're doing awesome. And that was his crew chief, Alan Gustafson, trying to keep his driver's head up as we close in on the final laps here at Darlington. Wow, Joey Logano just blew past Gordon as he went to challenge Harvick. Well, Joey Logano just made a green flag yeah, pit stop, yeah, so he got four fresh tires. Yeah, he's going to be about two seconds a, a lap faster. But I think I, what Alan Gustafson was telling Jeff Gordon, Kevin Harvick pitted four laps before they did. I go back to what I was talking about a while ago about the Hendrick drivers and the Gibbs drivers that I think are trying to make this race on making one more pit stop. I think everyone knows, including Alan, that Kevin Harvick will have to make two stops. Well, we got to say, we're going to have us a battle here in a minute, Larry. That 48 car, Jimmy Johnson, he's been nipping away at the back of the 18 car of Kyle Busch. Jimmy is better through the traffic than Kyle is. Kyle is a little slow getting around some of these lap cars. And it's allowed Jimmy Johnson, 48, to catch up. It yep. was down to a car length. The next car in front of Kyle is Montoya. And the 42 is on the lead lap. Expect him to put up a fight. And I know we talk about, all oh, this guy reminds me of David Pearson. That guy reminds me of David Pearson. Nobody drives <laughs> this track 
like Jimmy Johnson. Saw him win here last year. He's that kind of guy that I don't, I'd hate to think. And here he is. He's got pressure on Kyle right now in the 18 car, Kyle Busch. I'd hate to think that guy was closing in on me. Well, the they have, are on their feet. They have brought him to their feet here. Look at him. He just gets through the middle of the corner and just gets off the corner better. Kyle had the high line, so a little better run down the back straightaway. But it's true groove racing down here in three and four. And, you know, I, I know we've heard a lot of radio transmission back from four different teams. I haven't heard Jimmy Johnson complain all night about anything. It looked like through three and four, as he's been doing all night, Kyle Busch gets that run off the high side. Jimmy Johnson in the 48, you're riding with him. He just can't quite complete the pass. Well, guys, one of the things I want to talk about here is a 48 car. If you remember the start of this race, we showed inside that race car, Chad Canal showing Jimmy Johnson. Here's the game plan, guys. This is what we're going to do tonight. Keep, keep the faith. This is what this team does so well. They formulate a game plan. They stick to it. At the end of the night, they're either leading the race or they're putting pressure on the leader. And that shows a sign of a true championship caliber team. And right there is Chad Canal right now basically getting the job done here late in this race. Yeah, I, I just think we talked about this in a practice qualifying show, the pace. A lot of road rash for the orange cone tonight. Yes. Uh, he just went the length of uh, half the length of pit road off the front bumper of Paul Menard. Yeah, he's going to have to pick himself up and uh, get back down there to the pit road entrance. Yep. Well, and Paul Menard Ouch. will be back on pit road because that's a violation of the commitment cone. You have to be on the inside of that commitment cone here at Darlington. I'd say he violated. He dragged it a thousand feet. Yes, he did. He used it up. Kyle Busch puts a lap on Montoya. A little less pressure from Jimmy Johnson right now. Oh, Johnson, big slide in turn four there. I think that's a wake-up call from Jimmy Johnson. Don't forget about me, buddy. I'm back here trying to put pressure on Kyle Busch in the 18 to maybe make a mistake. Well, I said Montoya wouldn't go down without a fight, and he is battling Kyle Busch, and only now does Kyle clear him and put Montoya a lap down. Well, Darrell and I were talking about that earlier. Montoya, he's not just going to roll over and let Jimmy Johnson in the 48 go by him, but he definitely raced Kyle Busch, the 18, the leader, much harder. Larry, when do these leaders need to be on pit road? It's lap 290 right now. Well, again, we talked about those drivers like Kyle Busch, our leader, Jimmy Johnson in the 48, when they last pitted. If they go to about lap 304 or 305, we know that would be their last stop. But I think you'll see other drivers like Kevin Harvick in the 29 hitting pit road earlier. Here is Montoya battling Kyle Busch to keep from going a lap down. Remember, this is a guy running 11th. This is the yep. 11th place car of Montoya trying to stay on the lead lap here, if at all possible. And then one lap later, Battling Jimmy Johnson. He was trying hard, but you see him pointing out the window. Go ahead, Jimmy. Uh, you got the position, and I don't want to race you down into turn one. Four tire stop for Brad Keselowski as he will need at least he will need another stop to get to the finish, it appears, stopping here with 75 to go. But but guys, that's up to the top ten now. Carl Edwards in the 99 running 10th, and uh, the 18 car of Kyle Bush closing in on him. When we come back, we'll be looking for the leaders to make their final stops of the night if we stay green. 74 to go in Darlington. <laughs> 68 to go in Darlington. Fox Sports 1 launches August 17th. Here's your Fox Sports 1 race summary. Kyle Busch, the first of nine cars on the lead lap. Eight lead changes, only one caution flag so far. And Kyle has led 210 of the now 300 laps this time by. Greg Biffle, Martin Truex, and Kevin Harvick have made pit stops, all with 68 laps to go. So we expect they'll need to come in one more time. And Mike, we're averaging 152 miles an hour. Wow. Wasn't that long ago we didn't Be careful. Hold on to it. Regan Smith. Something was wrong with that car when it went by here last time. Real, real slow down on the apron. 
Yeah. Oh, there he goes. he goes. Got a problem with the car back Caution there. waves for the second time tonight at lap 302. But right in the middle of a, of a cycle of green flag pit stops, more importantly, Kevin Harvick in that 29 just had stopped. You see Montoya in the 42 on pit road now. Regan Smith flat left rear tire caused him to come around and bring out the caution flag. Montoya's team completes their stop. I believe they were on pit road as the caution flag waved. I believe they were already in the pit lane. Now Kurt Busch had already made his stop. So had others. So the field freezes with nine cars on the lead lap. And unofficially Ryan Newman, the first car one lap down once but again. That's not going to take, you know, this is a car spinning out. Regan Smith in a 51 here. Uh, it's not going to take very long. No debris on the track or anything, so this should be a pretty quick yellow. Now, those drivers like Kevin Harvick, Kurt Busch in particular, maybe even Martin Trex Jr. in a 56, what they'll do is what Brad Keselowski did earlier, take that wave around. Look, no faster than that car's going. Watch that roof flap deploy. And look how big it is. I mean, they have really done an amazing job of this car to get these roof flaps where they come up at even that slow of a speed. Yeah, for it even got the 45 degrees angle. That roof that flap on the right side had deployed. Pops right up. You can see the left rear tire back there is, uh, is down and uh, torn up. Roof flap, hood flap, all designed to eliminate a pressure deferential of air going over versus air going under the car that would put that car possibly up in the air. Pit road is open. Larry, if you come now with 65 laps to go, what do you think? Oh, I think you can make it because we're going to have a few caution laps here. Steve. Air pressure adjustments, Larry Mack, for Casey Kane. Air out of both front tires, air in the left rear tire. He finally said that the front of the car felt a little bit tight after saying loose all night. Krista. Jimmy Johnson and Chad Knauss have been together for over a decade. This crew has not. They are still relatively young. High fives, fist pumps before Jimmy came in. They know this is their money stop. Matt? Kyle Busch chasing his second Southern 500 win. He said, I need help both in the front of the car and the back. So they made a chassis adjustment to help that. Meanwhile, Matt Kenseth said at the 30 lap mark of the run, the car swung extremely loose, a, a five to a six on his scale. They made a track bar adjustment as well. Just blistering fast pit stop for all those guys. Kyle Busch wins the race off pit road from Jimmy Johnson, Casey Kane, Matt Kenseth, and Denny Hamlin. Here's the race off pit road. Only the second caution flag tonight. Yep, this changes everything. We're under caution at Darlington with 62 laps to go. That's almost 100 miles. The question is, can they make it all the way? Steve Burns. Well, Kenny Francis and Casey Kane certainly hope so, Mike. Kenny telling Casey to save gas right now under caution, Krista. And that is the strategy as well here in the 48 pit. As soon as that caution came out, Chad Canals is telling his driver, save me some fuel. Then he came on the radio and said, we can make it to the end. Matt? Krista, both Kyle Busch and Matt Kenseth were scheduled to stop at lap 305. They, they pitted about a lap earlier. They've both been told to go into fuel conservation mode. Dave Rogers told me, Jeff Hammond, they feel like they are very close to making it. I think that's a, probably the case with all these teams. They can probably go the distance. But the big question is right now, can we put enough pressure on Kyle Busch to force a mistake by the 18 car? He's been so dominant all night long. On this restart, I think if you want to win this race, you've got to go up there and show him that you want it more than he does. Kyle Busch will be the race leader on the restart from Jimmy Johnson. Kevin Harvick did not stop. He'll take the wave around. So will Kurt Busch and Greg Biffle and Martin Truex, who stopped under green. A week ago, Kyle Busch set off the big one at Talladega Super Speedway. He got into the back of Casey Kane, a driver that he likes and respects and felt horrible about it. He's in the yellow number 18, gets into Kane's number five, and that set off the big one. Kyle Busch really felt bad about triggering the accident, manned up, took responsibility, and then comes in here to Darlington and he has all but cleaned house. He won the Saturday night race, a Friday night race, leading almost all the laps. And tonight, he's led 217. 
out of 306. Well, this restart will be a real test of his patience and his maturity, quite honestly, because that 48 has a tendency to intimidate you. And that may be what Jimmy Johnson hopes, is he can get up there and put pressure on Kyle, Kyle Busch in the 18, and he may make a mistake. All the cars that stopped under green prior to this second caution of the night are taking the wave around. It's only the second caution flag. In 1963, the Southern 500 ran caution free. NASCAR Hall of Fame nominee Fireball Roberts won driving for Holman Moody in a race that had no yellow flags. Now, all those drivers taking the wave around, they, they definitely want to see a caution for a couple reasons. One, to either get back on the lead lap or get one of their laps back. But we know they cannot make it to the end because they did not pit under this caution. One, two, three, four, five, and that includes six. Kevin Harvick. There's 20 of them, Darrell, that are trying oh to get gosh. a lap back. Most of them were multiple laps down. Harvick will be the only one to get back on the lead lap by virtue of the wave around with one to go. I think this is going to be a very interesting and exciting restart. In other words, cinch up your seatbelt and hold on. Yeah, I, I think it's critical, Larry. I think it's really critical for a number of reasons. Matt Kenseth in the 20 has been fast, been lurking back. What you've got is the lurkers. 48 <laughs> is a lurker. 20 is a lurker. 24 is. Those are guys that kind of hang around till the end of the night. And then where did he come from? All of them. And if any of them back through Earnhardt, Stewart, Edwards, Montoya, those lead lap cars, if they've made the right adjustment on this pit stop, they could challenge Kyle Busch as we're going to take the restart flag with 59 laps to go. Kyle Busch outside of Jimmy Johnson gets a good run. Yeah, great restart by Kyle. That's going to make it real easy for him. A little tougher for the guys behind him, though. Kenseth alongside Johnson gunning for second. Gets it coming off turn two. Boy, nice move by Matt Kitchens in a 20 going down off the of turn two. Nice pass. I believe 14 got into wall back there. Tony Stewart and 14 may have caught the wall off two. As he battled Carl Edwards in the 99 and Dale Earnhardt Jr. Kyle is setting sail. Well, I think he knew he couldn't mess around either with those hungry hounds back there trying to get after him. 28.02 on that lap. What a wad of cars mid pack on back here. And there's Stewart in the wall a couple of laps ago. Yeah, yeah he pretty got, good with that right rear. He got forced up there and uh, he got it pretty good. Three wide turn four. Not sure that could work. But Jeff Burton scoots through the middle of it right there with Quapple and Mark Martin. See, see all the damage there on Tony Stewart's number 14. Yeah, yeah that's heavy damage. I'm not sure he won't have to bring that car to pit road. Uh, that's pretty serious. Clint Boyer flashes past. Yeah, Tony was running well inside the top 10 up about seventh or eighth. Sixth place, Denny Hamlin. And the 99 of Carl Edwards. Boy, Edwards' car has woken up after this last pit stop. And front straightaway, hard in the wall goes Casey Mears. I was watching these guys in turn three and four. There was no way they were going to make it off turn four. Well, that's not the caution Casey Mears wanted to see, but all those drivers that took the wave around, it's perfect for them. Kevin Harvick and Kurt Busch, most importantly. What was that statistic you read out earlier about we didn't have any cautions for a long, long time, and then we had a, like an abundance of them? Yeah, that was last year. Mm -hmm. One caution in the first half of the race, seven in the second half. So we've had two cautions in the first 80% of the race. And here we go. This was just a wad of cars, Daryl, and everybody trying to get where nobody could go. I was hollering at Barry. I said, Barry, turn four, turn four. I don't like the looks of this. 13 way up high outside Paul Menard. And Kurt Busch trying to flash through with Keselowski. They all kind of come together right, 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 right here. Oops. Kurt Busch in that 78 is going to have a little bit of damage on the right side of his car. Look at Brad Keselowski. A bunch of too. damage in his car. Here comes the 55 of Mark Martin, who is several laps down. And then and here they, they come. come. Bouncing off the wall and Again, even though it's a wide front straightaway, when they start bouncing off the wall, you just get into it. Kozlowski took a pretty hard hit to the outside there. Yeah, he, his car has serious damage. Well, 
know. Bernard I think it, washed up and it, well, it looks like the 13 Mears. maybe had to get up out of the throttle, like he was going to get into the in the wall, and then when he did, Menard in the 27 piled into him. Let's right, li listen. Casey Mears. Listen. Papa three. Papa three. Yeah. Did you hear him pedaling? Stand here, boy. You could hear him pedal it in yes. that little bit is what got Menard into the back of him. The ride with Greg Biffle. Easy back up, easy, 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 Big break for Clint Boyer. There's the damage to Beer's car. Boyer gets the free pass. Pits are closed, but Brad Kozlowski comes to pit road as Mears goes to the garage. Well, you can see all the damage on the right front of his two cars, so that's the reason they went ahead and pitted early, even though pit road was closed. Yeah, I'd say they knocked the radiator out of it. It definitely got all the front nose caved in on it, but I'd be surprised they don't have some radiator problems. Well, I think an indication, there, you see the steam at the right side base of the windshield. That's the overflow for the radiator. That's kind of an indication they may have a radiator issue. Things start to happen and they happen fast here at Darlington. We're under caution for the third time. Pit road is open. Krista. Crew Chief Chad Knauss gave his driver Jimmy Johnson one word command. Pit. Then he said to his crew members, gentlemen, this is your time. Jimmy Johnson comes in. No adjustment scheduled for this car. They had the wrench ready. They did not take it over the wall. Instead, four tires and fuel. Matt. And Denny Hamlin, his team called him to pit road as well, as well as the 99 of Carl Edwards. There was no debate there. Jimmy Finnick going for four tires. Hamlin said the racetrack is absolutely greasy. I don't know that that's a bad call because we do not have that many drivers on the lead lap. So we'll just have to see about half of them did make pit stops there. A caution was a break for Tony Stewart. Remember, he had been in the wall and uh, his team had a chance to make repairs and pull those fenders. Chris. Kyle Busch has led 224 laps and counting, Mike, an epic deal a moment ago with uh, Michael Waltrip on some of the strategy, who stayed out, and the tires coming into play. Well, we've seen these tires fall off as much as a couple of seconds during the course of a run. Four or five laps can make a difference. I think that's huge that Chad Knauss, Jimmy Johnson's crew chief, called him to pit road, had a few people follow him, a couple stayed out. This is going to mix things up. Anytime there's a guy as dominant as Kyle Busch has been all night long, you better do what he does it so that you've got a chance to get him. And I think that move by Jimmy Johnson's team gave him that chance. And we know that Kyle Busch is terrific when it comes to restarts, but as has been indicated, if you do get into a situation with more cautions and uh, pit stops, if uh, that puts more pressure, hoping maybe for a miscue on the part of Kyle Busch. Well, and we see that very rarely, but these restarts, you see them side by side charging down into turn one. I've done that before, Chris. I know how hard it is to hold your car on the bottom. We saw Kyle pick the outside lane last time. Jimmy Johnson lost a couple of spots because of being pinned down low. But as the laps wind down, you don't get pinned down. You start pushing around, and that's when action picks up. Yeah, after just one caution over the entire stretch with 65 to go, we had another caution, and then moments ago with 55, the third caution. Michael, with only 12 and Clint Boyer getting back on the lead lap, 12 cars in the lead lap. Does that allow you to gamble a little bit more if you want to pit to maybe since it's a lower number of cars? There you see Boyer leave the pit after his stop. Yes, Chris, it gave Chad Knauss, Jimmy Johnson's crew chief, the opportunity to say, hey, we better mix things up. We're not going to win the race. I don't think we can beat Kyle heads up, but we can come to pit road and get some tires and take him down. And you know, because there were so few cars on the lead lap, he didn't have to worry about how far he would fall back. So I love this call by Chad Knauss. We talked earlier about about um, Brad Kozlowski, crew chief Paul Wolf not being here. The guy said he's chiming in from somewhere for sure. <laughs> but their strategy of skidding, taking the um, wave around didn't work out for that team, and then they had a crash. If it's not Jimmy Johnson challenging Kyle Busch, who else would you look for down the stretch? I love Casey Kane. I think he's got a car that he can do it with as well, but I love those tires that Jimmy Johnson has. Uh, Micah, you talked about it, and during the week, of course, not only a text, a phone call from Kyle Busch to Casey Kane to say, hey, sorry about the wreck, the mishap, we're, we're all good, and uh, Casey Kane said, hi, except uh, all's fair. Yep, you got to put that behind you and move on because there's an, another race every week. It was Mark Donahue famously said, even after winning, the next midnight, the clock turns back to zero. 
Darrell, the four lead cars have 11 laps more on their tires and 11 laps less gas than those chasing them. Yeah, but they also have track position, and so that yeah. that's huge for Kyle Busch to be out front, clean air. I've watched him all night. He's really, really strong when he's out front. I think he's in good shape. Uh, I don't see any problem for Kyle Busch. Jimmy Johnson. That's the guy to keep an eye on, though. Yeah, I don't think fuel is an issue for anyone, but I couldn't agree with Michael Moore. I think Jimmy Johnson and Chad Knauss knew if they just follow Kyle Busch all night long as far as pit stops, that they're not going to beat him. But when he came down pit road, that pulled seven other lead lap drivers with him. So only the top four are out there on older tires. Darrell, how hard does Matt Kenseth battle his teammate into turn one on this pivotal restart. We've seen it time and time again. It was, you really don't think about that being your teammate. I mean, you're going for a win now. And, uh, you know, these are the these have been two of the best cars out here all night. The 18 Dom, obviously very dominant. Matt, you never know how good he is until it comes the time of the, this time of the race. Two gives Toyotas on the front row, followed by three Hendrick Chevys, one Roush Ford, and the rest of the 12 cars on the lead lap. It'll be 50 laps to go when they get the green flag. Crowd on their feet, drivers at the ready, green flag. Another great, awesome restart. And here comes Jimmy Johnson in a hurry, trying to look under Casey Kane to five. No room right there. Kansas ends up fourth. The two Hendrick Chevys splitting the two Gibbs Toyota. I think one thing Jimmy Johnson wants to be able to do with those tires is pounce. Pounce now while they're in, while he's got a little bit of an advantage. Now these are all lead lap drivers. The only one that's not is Ryan Newman in that 39 car. He's one lap down, but that's a huge battle for position. I don't know what happened to Matt Kenseth on the restart. It was a, not a good job on that on the restart. He spun the tires. Look to me like you'll Let's see have the, a look here. Yeah, you'll see the car. This uh, 20 car on the outside here. The car just wiggles. Let's see right there. When he switched, when he changed gears, went second to third, the car broke loose, cost him a lot of track position. And when you stay out there on tires, that's one of the things you really have to be aware of. And I didn't see them guys, what we call cleaning them up. Normally the crew chief will be all over you. Clean them up, clean them up. I think Tony that was a, I think it was a great caution for Tony Stewart because remember he had that damage from hitting the wall. It allowed them to make some repairs to that car. Well, well he's got it again as Kevin Harvick came alongside. It's kind of like a seventh inning stretch right there. You needed that little break to take a deep breath. But we got a race going on now, and it's not with Jimmy Johnson. It's with the Casey Kane in the five car. He is up there trying to take the lead from our leader here, Kyle Busch. Kane brought his Chevrolet off turn four high, looked low, nothing there that time. Single file through one and two. We saw the same thing earlier, not that many laps ago, with Jimmy Johnson in the 48 and Kyle Busch. He made a run at him, and then all of a sudden, Kyle Busch, like, pulled away from him. Can't work on the low side. Daryl, if there's going to be a pass for the lead based on what we've seen tonight, you'd think it would happen up in turns three and four. Yeah, it looks to me like one high, one low, and whichever way the other guy goes, you know, you take the different route. Uh, they really can make good time hooking it around the bottom of turn four, three and four down here. It might be a great passing opportunity, but that, that gum 18 just pulls away when somebody gets after him. And look at the drivers battling for fifth and sixth. Denny Hamlin, his first full race back after a cracked vertebrae in his back. Juan Pablo Montoya, nearly the winner at Richmond, has battled back from outside the top ten, and I believe he was one lap down, but now he's in sixth place fighting for top five. And, and I think they made a great call a while ago when he was on pit road and that caution came out. They went ahead and completed their pit stop, and that saved him a lot. But I think this is a great run for Denny Hamlin and that 11 team for a lot of reasons, because if you look at his first five races prior to getting injured at Auto Club Speedway, I know he was in a position to win that race, but he only had one top 10 finish. So I think for an abundance of reasons, this is a great run, hopefully a good finish for Denny Hamlin and this group. And the pace of the race tonight, Larry, I mean, with no cautions, hard racing, a lot of focus, a lot of concentration, and he has hung in there like a trooper. We've seen this out of Denny before, Denny Hamlin. Remember when he had his knee operated on? He came back the next week and won the race. He seems to really thrive on adversity. But you got to love Montoya. 
He is on Denny Hamlin like a dog chasing the mailman. Don't know what he's going to do when he catches him. But he keeps trying the bottom here. You look at Juan Pablo Montoya in the 42 in their season, the only bright spot whatsoever was leading all those laps a couple of weeks ago in Richmond and getting that top five. That's been the only good run and finish they've had in 2013. But, but Larry, that, that's like a turning point. I mean, that great run and that really got the team together and got them some, uh, got them some momentum. And here we are at a very, very tough racetrack. And Juan is the Juan Montoya here is right up in the thick of things, running six. And challenging. Denny Hamlin for fifth. Now that battling's allowed Jeff Gordon to close in. So it's a three-car fight for that final top five position. We'll keep an eye on it with 41 laps to go in Darlington. You're watching NASCAR on Fox. As you saw, Caution is out with 39 laps to go, and here they come, Steve. Mike Casey Kane says, don't touch it, just put tires on it. No adjustments to this car, please. So four tires and a tear off. Krista. Steve, four tires, also the call for Jimmy Johnson, and they do make an adjustment. Jimmy's saying, I need a little more turn. Matt? And Kyle Busch slides into his pit box. He asked Dave Rogers, if you have any tricks up your sleeve for more grip, please take a swing at it because the car was going free again. Exactly what Matt Kenseth was telling Wally Brown. The car just started to swing to the free side, but it did take off much better this run. Here comes Kane. Here comes Bush. Comes out, closes him off, and Kyle Bush wins the race off pit road. The guy that really struggled here is the 48 car. Look what happened to him. And, and they didn't even put fuel in that car. They just put tires on it. But you see, lost five spots from third to eighth. Slow on the left side. I'm not sure what happened. Denny Hamlin and Carl Edwards were the big gainers on that stop. As Bush leads Kane off the pit road, then Hamlin. That 11 pit crew. It, it's on fire. You yes. back to Texas. How he won the race at Texas. I mean, they Kyle did Bush, the 18, Kyle Busch. Yeah. He, he did an 11 second pit stop at Texas. And they just cut a pretty good one right there. Let's show you a comparison between Kyle Busch and Jimmy Johnson. Well, you can see a little bit with the driver getting on and off pit road, but a second and a half of that crew. And Michael Waltrip talked to that crew on his walk down pit road a few weeks ago. That's the same guys for Kyle Busch, that 18 team, that's been together going across the wall, pitting that 18 car since Kyle Busch went there in 2008 with no changes. Well, Larry, Jimmy Johnson had trouble when he came out of his pit with cars that were still coming into their pits. He, he got hung up in traffic. Well, yeah, he but did, but it still was a second and a half on the actual stop. Yes. By the same token, they've had some changes on this 48 team. And what I was watching was I, I thought they might stick some gas in. They didn't. They just did a tires only. Let's take a look at uh, Jimmy Johnson's stop. You see a problem. I think it's on the left rear. Now you can see how much further ahead the right front changer was over the right rear changer, and that just escalates on through the stop. Because the they had to make an adjustment in the right rear. He asked for a little chassis adjustment. Yeah, watch the left rear. He just seems left front's on and ready to go, and the left rear is just coming off. It's like he was having trouble getting the lug nuts off the left rear, and of course that, that makes it slower going back on. So it was really both rear tires. We're under caution for David Rudiman and Josh Wise. Rudiman's number 83 running 24th as Josh Wise got around with uh, Marcus Ambrose and then came up track right in front of Rudiman. Uh, Wise was running 30th in the 35. Fourth caution flag of the night and for the third time in four cautions Ryan Newman is the recipient of the free pass <laughs> as Rudiman's car goes to the garage along with David Reagan's last week's winner having a tough night there's damage to the right side of David's car and other woes I have never seen so many wave around cars the last two cautions 20 the last one and what was that 19 that time 
That's amazing. Well, I think that's a product of Kyle Busch putting so many drivers down a lap. It's, it's the only way they feel like they can stay in touch with maybe staying on the lead lap. Now, what that will do is put Kurt Busch, Martin Truex, and Greg Biffle back on the lead lap. So if you add them and Newman, who was the free pass car, will have 16 lead lap cars when we restart with 35 to go this time around. Well, I think your stat is coming into play. I the deeper too. we go and the closer <laughs> we get to the end, yeah. I, I, I doubt we're absolutely through with caution flags. Looks like Kyle's going to take the outside here on this restart. Carl Edwards fifth there. So it's Kyle Busch outside Casey Kane this time. Matt Kenseth, his teammate, behind Kyle Busch, his other teammate, Denny Hamlin, on the inside. Then it's Edwards and Gordon, Montoya and Johnson, Harvick and Earnhardt yeah. in the top ten. Stewart, Boyer, Newman, Biffle, Truex, and Kurt Busch. The rest of the lead lap cars, green flag, 35 to go. Kyle's been getting great restarts. Not this time. Casey Kane in the five is there, and he was there a minute ago in the last restart. Whoa, getting tight, tight. Hang on, boys. He was trying to clear Kyle Busch in that 18 to slide up in front of him. Just couldn't quite get there. No, but it, they were, man, they were close, and he's not done yet. Look at him drive that thing in and slide up the hill. Whoa! Kyle Busch tries the crossover move. Back to the bottom. Casey Kane, who's going to lead this lap? Busch by a foot. That was a slide job by Casey Kane in the five. I thought he was going to pull it off, and they're not done yet. Oh, boy. He got Kane it. in the wall. I mean, he was driving in so hard. That could cause trouble over there. And yeah, the caution, caution is out. Casey was trying that slide job on Kyle, and he, on Kyle Busch, and I think it worked out so good. Darrell, it was his one best chance to win this race. Yeah, and well, it looks like checkers are wreckers. These two guys have had a little bit of an issue. Shut off. Check your kill switch. And something has caused Casey Kane's car to stop running. He is coasting in. From the blimp, let's show you what happened here. Yeah, this is, I mean, going down into turn three, I think this is. Right here, Casey goes up the hill. Tries to put the slide, slide job on. Here comes Kyle Busch and the 18 back. They go down the front side by side, and it's almost impossible to race into turn one side by side. Casey Kane in the five once again drives in really, really hard, but he loses control of the car and gets in the wall. Daryl, did Kyle Busch in the 18, did he get down on an apron and come up the racetrack just a little bit? I, I didn't see Kyle, I didn't see Kyle Busch do anything. Let's look at it and see. You he's see, on, he gets on, on the, the flat. flat. He's on the flat. He comes up. He comes up. Maybe. 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 Looked like that he did get the left rear of Casey Kane and sent Casey sliding out of control. That's just a situation, Daryl. You well know if you're the outside car, you've got a better angle to that corner, and you're going to make it faster. Kyle, those guys were racing with their hearts. I've never seen two guys race any harder for two laps, but it didn't turn out well I, for Mike, Casey the I, last I, two weeks in a row. I'd have to look at that again yeah. at another angle. I just don't, I don't know if the 18 got into him or not. I don't see any damage on the left rear of the five of Casey Kane. I don't see any damage on the right front of the 18. We can take a look at it and see. I know it looks close. He's down on the apron. He's going up. He's going up. I, I think I think Casey lost it after he Casey came to five. Lost it after he cleared the 18 of Kyle Busch. Well, and Daryl, isn't that the worst place that Kyle Busch could be on Casey? Oh yeah, Kane on I that mean, left rear quarter panel. Just being there will take the air off the car. I it's, I don't know. It's so close. Hard to say. I, I'm just looking at the quarter panel, and I don't see any marks. Yeah, I, I don't panel. even see a paint scratch I on don't Kane's even. car. But boy, but they were so close. Air will do some crazy things on these cars. You see right there, Casey is good, and Casey Kane to five is good until he clears. Such a tough angle for Kyle Busch to take that corner, Daryl. It looked to me like he hit him. It looked like to you that he didn't. But like I said before, as you well know, if you run down into that corner at, at, the, at the angle and the speed that these guys do in these cars now, they've built the confidence all night long. They're on the edge of control. Is there There's any damage a, there? There is not a mark on that car. I no. tell you, I just think it was all air, and it was really, really close. Oh, it was good racing, no doubt. That was fun to watch. I mean, you know, not the result, but the action. Not for Samantha. She's a, 
What happened? What happened? But Darrell, uh, Casey Kane in the five, driving it deep in there, getting a little loose, and then Kyle Busch right on that quarter Just panel. right down on his side. Steve? Well, Mike, what is a mystery is why that car, the power shut off. Kenny Francis, the crew chief, saying, cycle your ECU, check both your batteries. Really still a mystery why the power cut off on that five car. And the ECU is electronic control unit, pretty much the brains of the entire electronic fuel injection and ignition system. And we've heard that a lot where you have to kind of shut it off and recycle it to get it back going. Jamie McMurray will get the free pass as we're up to caution flag number five inside of 35 laps to go. But I, I think when we saw what Casey Kane in the five did in turn three, drove it in really, really hard and slid up in front of Kyle. And he did the same thing in turn one. And, and, and he just lost it a little bit. You said in the pre-race, he was going to have to get aggressive tonight. He did. He was tonight. So Kane will try to rebound from 16th on the restart. As the Gibbs Toyotas line up one, two, three. In last night's race, four of the top five Joe Gibbs drivers. And the lurkers are getting closer again. And they got a big win from the appeals board this week as well. I mean, you got Jeff Gordon, who loves this place. No, I mean, yeah, seven-time winner. A seven-time winner. You got Matt Kenseth, loves this place. You got the 11 car, Denny Hamlin, one of the best average finishes to hear of anybody. Saturday night shootout, 30 laps to go. And again, Kyle Busch gets a great restart. This time, Kenseth's with him. Well, what happened on the last restart? Remember, Kyle took Busch took the outside. I thought that was a mistake, and he wouldn't make that mistake again. Look at Carl Edwards in that 99. Cracked the top five. Actually battling Jeff Gordon in the 24. This is a battle for fourth. For much of the night, Edwards has been the only forward in the top ten. Riding with Jimmy Johnson in the 48, trying to overcome that hiccup on that pit stop, the caution before the last one. Larry, this is just as a driver, when you do things that you really are not sure you're going to be able to do, but you try it because it's the end of the race and you're trying to get the best finish or win the race. Kevin Harvick up for sixth. There's Dale Jr. with Greg Biffle and Kurt Busch. They all got back on the lead lap. All night long, you sort of restrain yourself. Don't take any chances, but that's all off. All bets are off. Time to go. the top 10 back to where Kurt Busch is battling Dale Jr. for 10th. We're going to stay right here, take you side by side with 28 to go in Darlington. 24 laps to go in the Bojangles Southern 500. Kyle Busch out in front of his Joe Gibbs Toyota teammate Matt Kenseth by nine tenths of a second. Teammate Denny Hamlin in third in his first race back after injuring his back at California. And Jeff Gordon right on Hamlin's bumper. The first of three Chevrolets behind those three Toyotas. And the five of Casey Kane, top of your screen. Just got into the wall. Oh yeah. Quite a bit of quite a bit of damage there. Get those fender flares pushed in. You can see the right front tire sticking out there. Still on the lead lap. We've got 17 drivers on the lead lap. Jamie McMurray in the one, the last driver on the lead lap. Watching from Greg Biffle back to Clint Boyer, 11 to 12. About you know, eight seconds back of the leaders. Kurt Busch right with them. From the pole, Kurt Busch led 69 laps tonight. You know what? I'm just looking at this 20 car and I'm looking at lap times. Case, uh, Matt Kent is in a 20 car and he is nipping away again a little bit at a time on Kyle Busch in the 18. I wouldn't count that 20 car. Matt Kent is out just yet. And Daryl, I don't know if we'll catch some lap down drivers in cars, but that's what been the Achilles heel of Kyle Busch in that 18 tonight. 
Now it's our sprint 20 to go as Kyle Busch flashes across the stripe. He's led 258 out of 347 laps tonight. Five cautions, four of them in real quick succession since lap 300. But Kyle has put on a clinic, leading three quarters of the laps. Joe Gibbs Racing has never finished one, two, three, but Matt Kenseth has led four laps tonight. He's on pace for his best ever Darlington Raceway finish, which was third back in 2006. If anybody has anything for those Gibbs cars, it could be Jeff Gordon, seven time winner here. His 700 career starts, all consecutive since he debuted in November 1992 in the Sprint Cup Series at Atlanta. Trying for win number eight at Darlington. Right now trying to stay within three and a half seconds of the leaders. I, I, I tell you, Kyle Busch, I believe, has a bit of a problem. The last couple of times, two, three, and four, I, if he didn't hit the wall or rub the wall, he was leaning on it. That car is really con start pushing up the hill. Chad Knauss's driver, Jimmy Johnson, in fifth, five seconds back. But Darrell, the one thing, his lap times, talking about Kyle Busch in the 18, they seem to be mirroring his teammate, Matt Kenseth, in the 20. And that's your sprint 20 to go. As to, we close it down here in Darlington. Trying to see the right side of the 18. Now, I, I don't see any damage on it, but golly, he was so close. And Darrell, it's not reflected in his lap times. He is running just about the same pace as the rest of the top five. He did lose about a tenth that time now as we'll be coming back to 16 laps to go. It just seems to me, it appears to me, he's running much higher in three and four than he has all night long. He's just right up against the wall, and Matt is closing that gap. You saw David Rudiman down on the apron. He's now taken his car to the garage. Darrell, there was another tenth and a half, and you can see the gap closing right there between Kyle Busch and the 20. You can see it right there, how much faster and the, the feet difference on the Fox tracks there as he's closing in. And it's in turn three and four. Here's where wow. Matt is gaining a ton. And I, Kyle is up against that wall. Now he just hadn't, now he's getting back down off there a little bit more where he's been running all night, but he is losing a ton of time in three and four. A battle of two-time Darlington winners when Kyle won here in 2008, it was his third win of what would become an eight-win season. Should he win tonight, it would be his third win of 2013. But, Darrell, we've seen this two or three times. Look how far Matt Kenseth in that 20. Look how much he closes up there, 23 feet. Kyle, Kyle is in, I mean, he just can't get two, three, and four. I, I don't know what happened to his car, but he's right up against the wall. I, I still think he may have rubbed it. So this is no longer if, it's when. And it could be in the next lap or two as Matt Kenseth stalks his teammate. Yeah, Kyle has got trouble with his car. I mean, he can't get off it. He, he, the car is either pushing really bad or got a tire going down or something. Here comes Kenseth for the lead with 13 laps to go. Can't clear him off four. Kyle Busch in 18 got that big runoff turn four up on the high side. Kenseth looking in one, a lapped car ahead. Will it be a factor? Had to let no. him go. Had to let him go. Can and he Kenseth is the new leader. Can I get him back? Can I get him back? Tried to crossover move down the back stretch. Now okay. we'll see who gets the jump off four. And oh. that's been Kyle's Achilles heel these last 10 laps. Yep. It's Kenseth. Kenseth is a long gone, boys. See ya, don't want to be ya. Denny Hamlin, 2.2 back of this duo. Jeff Gordon, three seconds back. Jimmy Johnson, four back. And just remember, Matt Kenseth is running this race without his crew chief, Jason Ratcliffe, here at the racetrack. A one-race suspension after the penalties in Kansas. Wally Brown on the pit box making the calls for, for Matt Kenseth. Because of a lightweight connecting rod, NASCAR took away the value of the Kansas win toward making the chase or toward bonus points. And all that was returned by the appeals board when that appeal was heard this week. So Ken, Kenseth effectively, in the course of this week, went from one victory that counted toward the chase and may end up tonight with three. 
I mean, when you look at the names that are in our top ten, Kansas, Kyle Busch, Denny Hamlin, Jeff Gordon, Jimmy Johnson, Kevin Harvick, sixth place, Edwards, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Montoya, all those guys really good at the, here at Darlington. Ten laps to go. What's up with Kyle Busch, man? He just broke radio silence, Mike. He told Dave Rogers the car is just extremely tight. I don't know where it came from, but the car has swung to the tight side. Dave suggested just try to dial some rear brake into it as a last resort. Yeah, that's a really dangerous thing to do here, man. You get that thing bad loose getting in a corner, and uh, that you'll hit the wall. So I'm not sure that's a good idea. And right here now, comes Hamlin. Yeah, that's his biggest problem. His teammate, Denny Hamlin, in that 11 car, and lurking back there, we've talked about him, Jeff Gordon, <laughs> that 24. If he can seal the deal with his top five, it will be his 300th career top five finish in his 700th career start. I believe he's got something for it. For Kyle, for sure. Kyle has really, really slowed down from what he was running all night long. And here goes Hamlin looking underneath Kyle. Kyle's got to let him go. The car, Kyle Busch's car just will not turn off the corner. That's where he's losing so much time. And when they said put rear brake into it, all that does is it means that it's, it's almost like you're trying to turn the car with the rear tires. And that gets you in trouble here. I, I, I just don't like that idea. And if Jeff Gordon gets this top five, that means over his entire career, his batting average for top five finishes would be 429. And that is huge. What a run. And there he goes after Kyle Busch in that 18 car. Can you imagine how dejected Kyle feels? Led 200 and some laps tonight and people driving by you. But we talked about it. Coming into this season, he had done that nine times where he led the most laps and didn't go to victory lane. Jeff Gordon tries to ensure that there would not be a 1-2-3 Toyota finish here in Darlington as he moves his Chevrolet into third. Behind Bush now, Jimmy Johnson, Kevin Harvick, Carl Edwards, Montoya, Earnhardt, and Newman with six to go. Jimmy taking the short way around there. Boy, Kevin Harvick has battled back after a change in strategy with two tires. Worked his way back up. Clint Boyer had a pit road penalty. What he about, has fought back. What about Newman? Got the lucky dog three times running 10th. And Jimmy Johnson moves past Kyle Busch, which puts the 18 back to fifth place. I don't know if anybody wants to see that white flag waving more than probably Kyle Busch and that 18 to know that this thing's going to be coming to a close. Four yeah, that laps to go. That 18 car just went all to pieces, as particularly in three and four, just could not get a car to turn, lost a lot of time, and then lost the lead. Behind Kenseth, our champion, Brad Keselowski, disappointing night. Nine laps down for the Sprint Cup champ. And Darrell, with Kyle Busch in the 18, it's almost like you threw a light switch. It wasn't like it just gradually happened. No, it didn't. It, it, he was going, 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 and then all of a sudden it just something happened. Three to go. But what a what a hire by Coach Gibbs to hire this man to get Matt Kenseth to come over and drive your cars. And look what Matt has done. I mean, he's he's turned out to be the leader of the Gibbs group. We knew Matt Kenseth was a winner. We didn't know he was such a great qualifier oh until he hopped gosh. into this Toyota, started winning some polls, and oh, by the way, his son Ross drove to victory tonight at South Boston, Virginia. Great. Gibbs has had a great week, and his drivers have too. For second place, Jeff Gordon trying to spoil Denny Hamlin's comeback. He's a little bit quicker than Denny Hamlin right now in the 11, but it may be too little too late. This is just so classic Jeff Gordon, though, Larry. I mean, how many times have we seen him at the end of these races? White flag in the air. He's got one more shot here at Denny Hamlin. White flag for Kenseth. A little bit of traffic in front of second place. Clear sailing for our leader. He is just up here in a long gone cruising to victory. 
And Gordon has backed off a bit from Hamlin, who catches the traffic. Yeah, I think Gordon really tried real hard in uh, turns one and two and lost a lot of time. Don't think he's going to be able to get Denny Hamlin in the 11. Out of turn four from Wisconsin, Matt Kenseth scores his 27th Sprint Cup Series win. And Thames Darlington with Denny Hamlin second, Jeff Gordon third, Jimmy Johnson and Kevin Harvick the top five. Kyle Busch led 265 laps and finishes sixth. Not a bad night for a substitute crew chief. Wow, I can't believe that. Gosh, you guys are good. Thanks, guys. Wolf Chase was here with us, too. Good job, guys. A one-two finish for Coach Gibbs. What that bunch and that team has been through over the last few weeks after that penalty at Kansas and to be here without their crew chief Jason Ratcliffe, this has to be so fulfilling for this group. Like I said, Larry, sometimes adversity makes you stronger. And I think this team has really risen to that occasion. <laughs> See man in there, look at him. He is bumped up. Yes, he is. Third win of the season. His previous best year was third. He said in pre-race, this isn't my best track. Tonight it is. I don't think he knew what his, I, I, he didn't know what his best tracks were until he got in this car. First career victory for interim crew chief Wally Brown. First win for Matt at Darlington in his 20th start here. His three wins in 2013 leads the lead. Matt Kenseth has won the Southern 500. NASCAR's three-time winner this season, the only one, Matt Kenseth, the Daytona 500 winner, a Coke 600 winner in his career, and a 64th annual Bojangles Southern 500 winner. And in the pre-race, Kenseth talked about taking notes from Denny Hamlin as well as Kyle Busch, who have had wins here before, but Hamlin completing 500 miles for the first time since the end of March, completing the race when he had the back injury. Of course, went 25 laps and spent eight and a half hours with us through the rain in Tallahassee uh, last week. Let's go down to Victory Lane where Matt Yoakum is standing by. His crew chief, Jason Ratcliffe, was in a command center in Huntersville, North Carolina. On the computer trying to help this team, Wally Brown on the box, Matt, this race is special. Did it make it sweeter having this team gone through what they went through? I mean, they're all sweet. Um, honestly, I've only dreamed about winning the Southern 500. This, to me, feels bigger than probably any win in my career. So I uh, really feel bad that Jason's not here. I mean, this is obviously his team and, uh, and his effort. But Wally did a great job filling in. Uh, it's about all these guys behind me, man. We had about a fifth or sixth place car fighting loose. And um, their last two adjustments were just, uh, were just awesome. So uh, to be able to duke it out with Kyle for the end there, uh, he's a great teammate. Denny is as well. Uh, man, we've got, a, we've got a good combination right now. As you went through the night, what was the biggest challenge trying to dial in this car? <laughs> that was it. You know, we started pretty good, and uh, the track took a turn of the loose, which I think a lot of people were, were expecting, and uh, we just had a hard time getting it. So uh, real, real quick, too, I need to thank all our sponsors. I need to thank Sprint, uh, Home Depot, Husky Tools, Dollar General, Toyota, Gatorade, Citizen Watches, GameStop, and Reesers. Uh, without all our great partners, uh, we wouldn't be standing here, so I sure appreciate them all. A big win tonight for the Kansas family. Ross at South Boston and Matt here at Darlington. Kristen. Well, a big night for Joe Gibbs Racing and for Denny Hamlin. It's been nearly a month and a half since you were back in a race car for a complete race. Number one, how do you feel? I'm tired. I mean, uh, yeah, just worn out. This is a this is a tough, grueling race, so you know there's nothing to hang our heads about. Uh, coming up second again two years in a row, but uh, proud of uh, Gordon and everyone at Sport Clips for uh, you know doing this race with us. Uh, we had a lot of success, but my team's just. Uh, Guys on pit road, flawless. I mean, best, best in the business. That's all I can say. They kept picking us up spots. I uh, kept doing my part on the track, and uh, you know, just uh, we needed a 600-mile race. We'll get that in a few weeks. You'd be ready for a 600-mile race? Yeah, you know, 
Charlotte, believe it or not, the 600 miler is not as grueling as this racetrack. You just, you have to say, stay so mentally tough for so long. Um, and on top of the physical stuff that you got going on, that uh, it, it's tough to overcome. And uh, luckily, it was a good day for us. If there was any question, he put his doubters to rest. Denny Hamlin is most certainly back, Steve. Well, Krista, Casey Kane is just debriefed with Rick Hendrick. And Casey, we're taking a look at what happened between you and Kyle Busch. From your point of view, what happened? Uh, we were racing hard. I had a great time winning cable Chevrolet, and um, I cleared him, you know, getting into three, so I had the outside, and then I saw he entered so early, I knew he was going to, like, not be able to turn when we got to the corner. And um, I was going along. Next thing I know, I'm, I was spinning, so I felt really good, and the car was getting better and better as the race went. Uh, they had to make a lot of adjustments and things, but um, I don't know, three times this year, me and Kyle have been, you know, had contact and I've had chances, you know, capable of winning cars. So it's, it's disappointing on the point side and on, uh, you know, not winning some of these races. But, you know, that was that was close race. And he entered so early and he's just going straight for the corner. So, you know, whether he hit me or just blew the air off, you know, whatever it was, he blew his entry. And I'm not real sure what he was thinking on that. All right. Thank you, Casey. Appreciate your patience. Let's go back to Krista. Thanks, Steve, with Casey Kane's teammate. And in his 700th consecutive start, 300th top five. Those are big numbers. What would it need, What did you need in your car to get the biggest number, the win tonight? Well, I was excited that Darlington was going to be that 700th start. And this team was ready to go out there and do battle. And that's what it takes at this tough racetrack. And really proud of this Chromex Pro Chevrolet team. I mean, I thought Allen called a great race. You know, we made the right adjustments at the right time and got good track position with tires there at the end and had some good restarts. So, um, you know, we need a track position. I thought our car was actually pretty fast there at the end. Um, but I don't know, you know, it, it, we just couldn't quite get it. We were always balancing between tight, loose, and right there at the end was about the best the car had been, and it took off really good, but it started getting tight on me, and um, then Jimmy started catching us. So I think that's about the best we could have asked for, but you always want to get out and clean traffic and see what it'll do. Congratulations on those numbers. Chris? Thanks, Krista. Those uh, 300 top fives moved Jeff Gordon to within one of tying for third all time. But Matt Kenseth at age 41, a rebirth with Joe Gibbs Racing, his third victory of the year. More from Darlington in a moment. Podium finish here at Darlington Raceway, and Matt Kenseth, who said he was looking forward to racing tonight, putting the appeal behind him after three weeks of all of that. And with strength enough to lift the trophy. 27th career win for Matt Kenseth and checking the results here. Impressive. The podium finish with Michael Waltrip, Chris Myers. How much did the Casey Kane move take out of uh, Kyle Busch towards the end? I don't think it affected his car any. If there was contact, it was slight. But Chris, you're right on the edge of control there. Casey Kane didn't like the way that Kyle entered the corner. Felt like he blew him around if he didn't hit him around. But uh, great recovery for Kevin Harvick. Got a lucky uh, or got a wave around, lost uh, a lap, and got it back. To finish top five. And what about Juan Pablo? We saw this team emerging as a contender this year. This continues that trend. Greg Biffle finishing 13th. Kurt Busch, the pole sitter, once again a pole sitter, does not have success here. 16 years running. Tony Stewart back on that lead lap a little bit late, and Casey Kane wound up 17th. Yeah, and a solid run by Ricky Stenhouse. We saw him down early, but he recovered to get a top 20. That's pretty good for a rookie. Joey Logano without his crew chief and his teammate Brad Keselowski both finished well down the order, so I know they'll be glad when this uh, whole suspension thing is behind them as well. David Gilliland, who helped uh, David Reagan to the upset victory at Talladega. Reagan, a rough night, 39th, but he will be in the All-Star Race next Saturday night, which we'll see on speed. And that's just a chance to celebrate your season. You're in the All-Star Race with the best Best in the business. That'll be another chance for David Reagan to say ah over that big moment at Talladega. For Kyle Busch, he led it 200 laps tonight. He led it 300. He led it 400. But in the end, his Toyota teammate Matt Kenseth after 500, and that took Matt Kenseth as he hugs his wife in celebration. He went from 11th in points to fourth after that appeal. The final appeal was amended. Now he's up to third, which is the best that he's been uh, this season. Yeah, and you can see there's Jeff Gordon. He was struggling in points. This night tonight gave him a big boost up two spots within sight of that 10th place points position, which obviously as all these guys go, you got to make the chase if you're going to be the champion. So Jeff Gordon's got a little momentum after tonight. And the second wave of that 
Martin Truex Jr., Greg Biffle on the doorstep. Biffle was the uh, points leader at this time last year, and Joey Logano having to make the adjustment with his crew team. Look where Tony Stewart is still looking for that first victory of this season as Ken's has already has three. Well, at least we're gaining a little momentum if you're Tony. He ran well the last couple of weeks, and he, uh, he's got a long way to go, but he's running better. The Ford struggled tonight. Not only Biffle, but Carl Edwards being the only Ford inside that top ten, so uh, they had some problems here. Joe Gibb Racing successful. We have some news on Kyle Busch, and Steve Burns has the latest. Steve? Yeah, Chris, we just got confirmation from the crew chief on the 18, Dave Rogers, that Kyle Busch had a cut right rear tire. In fact, when they got it into the garage, there's only 12 pounds of air pressure in that right rear tire. Thanks, Steve. Lap leader for the, the entire season so far is Matt Kenseth. Right behind him is Kyle Busch. And Joe Gibbs Racing celebrating a 1-2 finish. We'll have more from Darlington, South Carolina in just a moment. They've been racing here since 1950, and certainly Matt Kenseth enjoying the burnout. His 19-year-old son, Ross, the one in South Boston, so racing runs successfully in the family and the crew supportive of Matt Kenseth. This is one of the biggest races of the year, Chris. You win the Southern 500, that can make your season. Matt Kenseth has won the Daytona 500. He's the champion. He's won the Coke 600. And now he gets to add the Southern 500 to his resume. The 110th running of a race here in Darlington coming up next on Fox. Stay tuned for late local news. Also, we want to congratulate our audio crew, Fred Aldous, Ben Altop, and Kevin McCloskey for picking up an Emmy for their NASCAR on Fox coverage. The All-Star Race on Speed a week from tonight. And you won that, Michael Walter. Yeah, and there's $2 million up for that line. When I won it, I got two hundred grand. It's 10 times more this year. These guys are going to be on it on Saturday night on Speed. I love right. it. You're cashing in as a broadcaster. And then a week from Sunday, Memorial Day weekend. I right, kid. Uh, it's the Coca-Cola 600. And uh, Casey Kane uh, ran well with Jimmy Johnson through that. Tonight on Speed for continuing coverage here from Darlington. Tune in to Victory Lane on Speed and uh, 